Boom. We're live. How about that? How about Beautiful. that? Ladies and gentlemen, we have Ben Hibben. How are you, man? Hey, we're actually we're talking before this. Hey, man. Be before, we, before we went live. We're actually having I can't a... I can see you, though. Am I supposed to see you at some point? Oh, you're probably not going to see me. Um, you can... Oh, uh, you know that's what? Okay. Let, me, let me send you a link to the stream. And uh, you should be able to see me. I'm actually going to email it to you. It's going to bust my, my whole thing. I have, a, I have this set up. I need to figure out, and, and maybe I'll ask uh, uh, the audience if they can help me out. Uh, and maybe either tweet or send me a Facebook message or email or something. Because right now I have a setup where I'm using like a DSLR something camera. Wrong. Yeah, just make sure it's uh, muted. Oh. <laughs> Um, now it's gonna echo like crazy. I just have to cut the sound. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. all right. Yeah, it's cool. Man, <laughs> you're, in your, you're you're in a dark cave. It's not dark here. It's just uh, it's just the uh, because I'm using you're... DS I'm using DSLR for for webcam, which means that uh, I can I control. See. I have like a super epic Zeiss lens on that <laughs> cam, so it's like all looking you know cinematic and shit. <laughs> it's it's super dramatic. Very yeah, moody. Yeah, super dramatic. I like very it. Moody. I like it. So yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, I can play around with that. That's cool. But and you have a re really nice prints behind you, man. That's nice. That's <laughs> one of you, right? Yeah, that's this one is one of it's mine, and then that one is Ash's uh, epoch cool. stuff. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, those yeah. Are, those are great. I'm so I'm trying to put some some good art behind there to make it look. Cool. <laughs> the room is the room is bright. I'm dressing it up. <laughs> <laughs> the room is bright, but I'm using like those LED lights that are pretty strong. And with right. the camera exposure, it just makes everything look darker and right. like nice and contrasty. So I like that. The, the, the Lord of Dark, <laughs> the Lord of Darkness. I like Lord, it. The Lord That's of Darkness. Very nice, <laughs> dude. So how how have you been, man? Like how's uh, how's life for you? How's life treating you? I'm good. I've been I've been uh, moving all over the place lately. I've been uh, traveling the globe, man. I just uh, relocating every every other every other six months. So. It's been uh, it's been manic, but uh, kind of finally, finally, hopefully landing um, in LA. So yeah, it's so far so so very good. But uh, it's been a bit it's been a bit manic in the last two years. I was so I spend you know I spend a lot of my uh, working life in London, and then just suddenly decided to relocate uh, here via Canada and different kind of companies and stuff. So it's been uh, it's been emotional for yeah. me and my family, but. Uh, it's good. I kind of like, I feel like right now we've been here about, oh dude, like six, probably six months. Um, and it's, everything has just suddenly slowed down and fall into place. And yeah, it's, it's a cool place. Really, really, good. really nice peeps and stuff. So yeah. Good yeah, to it's, hear. It's good. Yeah. yeah. We met, we met a couple of months ago, right? It was what? Three, yeah. Four months ago? Time is yeah. Flying. Probably. Yeah. And I finally got to meet you in person, which was yeah. really cool. <laughs> yeah, we went. We went for a, that that cool coffee shop in Montana. Yeah, yeah, that was which great. Is your old neighborhood. Yeah, my old neighborhood moved yeah. out. Moved out. Yeah. Actually, How you doing? You know what? The, that 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 area of Santa Monica is great. Like, I, yeah, I, it's I super nice. Really liked it here. Or, or yeah, there. yeah, it was really awesome. Yeah, it's it's really nice, and like it's it's there's a lot of great shops, and it's um it's very lively, but not too lively. It's got a it's got a really nice vibe to it. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Super yeah, yeah. great. So, so uh, it's gotten a little bit busier over over the last couple of years, but it's still it's still very nice. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah, I'm liking the quiet though. I, I compared <laughs> to Lo compared to London. We we're just talking about this before. It's just compared to London is it's so, so much spread out. I mean, the density of London was just kind of uh, just you know getting getting to me at some. You know, it was just uh, here is so. So there's so much more space, and uh, it it really helps. Really, really helps. Really yeah. like it. And yeah, London. Lon I have I've been in London. Oh my god, like tw maybe 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago. So I'm pretty sure it's uh, it's a wow. completely different experience back then than now. But I remember it being extremely busy and like traffic everywhere. And um, we're we're moving by bus mostly. I don't think I don't think subway was. Oh, maybe it was subway. I can't remember. Must yeah, probably. Was it ever was it ever an option for you to kind of move to London at some point or? Yeah, yeah. I had um I had a couple of occasions to move there, mostly towards uh, later in my in my career, like not right. early on, but 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 later when I was actually 
uh, deliberating moving to United States. Um, right. I did had an option to, I think it was one of the games companies and there was a game company right. and then there was a, I think it was either MPC or frame store that I right. was talking to. It was, it was actually, no, actually it was double negative, double negative right. and frame store. Those two, those two places. And which, what, what was the, um, what was the, um, what was the Rocksteady or which one, what, what game company was it? Um, gosh, I can't remember now. Right. It's been, it's been such a long time ago. There's some remember. good ones in London though. Yeah. There's some good ones. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. London is like a hub right now. It, it used it's always used to be like yeah, London so and, and LA. If you're in any of those places, you'll be fine with work. Yeah. I just, I yes. just thought it's a little bit too crazy for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny though, because I think, um, if you, I mean, in my experience, which is completely, obviously, personal and subjective, it's um, at some point it just became quite difficult. I remember, like, in the early early two thousand, like, you know, animation and commercial was just crazy, man. It was, it was, um, there was a lot, of, like, you know, Studio AK and Shinola and MK, I mean, MK12 was not in in London, but mm -hmm. there was like this crazy, crazy wave of super, super cool animation and. A lot of TV commercials, a lot of obvious, obviously music videos were still happening at that point. Yeah, uh, budgets were great, and and there was such a great scene for animation. And that stuff is is obviously animation in in commercials is is like a wave. It goes in. It's like a trend, you know, because it's if you think about being a brand and wanting to be. Uh, attached to a particular style of animation, mm -hmm. you really you really have to go for it, right? Because you have to then roll it for a few years. So it felt like at some point brand would embrace animation. I'm not talking about you know the Nikes and the Cokes yeah, and yeah, all yeah. the guys that make those those longer spots, but you know smaller, more kind of daring brand. At some point, you were like, hey man, it'd be so great to to make something slightly more creative, for example, right? Um, and I remember like it would really go in waves. It'd be like loads of animation on TV and then nothing at all. And it was just like super, uh, uneven, you know? Um, and so f for me is like, at some point I went, when I went towards more the video game stuff, uh, actually in London, there was not that many studios that would be able to produce that stuff. Um, it might have changed a little bit, but you know, like even the mail at some point to tried to dive into, uh, making kind of producing video game trailers and stuff mm -hmm. and it didn't last very long man i mean it's just like because the um the infrastructures you need and the tech that you're using and the uh the how you know the com some of the complexity of of uh just the assets that you create for um uh, you know some of the uh some of these trailers is is uh they're not they're not they're not used to it do you know what i mean it's a very very different um a very different uh beast do you know what i mean than a commercial than a 30 second commercial yeah um, so it was interesting and, and that's why i kind of like for me going to uh um you know starting working with uh, you know axis animation that you know and that's that's actually how we met right yeah yeah we worked on the, <laughs> uh you were you were working at uh on the alien gosh was alien isola isolation uh, isolation yeah the yeah alien isolation. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so basically that stuff was, was uh, you know, th th you know, hey, it's going to be multiple characters. It's going to be crowds. It's going to be hair. It's going to be uh, cloth. It's going to be ice and fire. It's, basically, it's just going to be everything. Um, whereas I remember when we would actually go and pitch commercials, um, you know, uh, to the mill or frame store or NPCs. Mm -hmm. It, it would be, you know, that at that time, anyways, it would do like, you know, one would be super good with with creatures, one would be super good for cars. You know what I mean? There was like a very kind of like predefined speciality that they had that they would actually shine through by applying it to, you know, features and stuff like that. And they would use that tech for commercials. So it was kind of like it was a really. I mean, this is um, this is way back. So obviously, to some of those guys, it, it's very different now. But it's like, I remember it was. In London, it ended up being fairly difficult to actually for my productions to happen right in London. So I would just be, I would be like gone all the time, uh, <laughs> which should be like, which just kind of sucks, right? Because where, you're in, where would you have to travel? Where, where was the most of the uh, well, work so coming I, from? I, I, it would I, all the work would come from the states, but I, <laughs> I would I would produce it, which kind of made the the day um, impossible because. Uh, then you would have your UK day that would end at like seven o'clock at night, and then you would yeah. start getting emails, and you would get 
uh, you would get phone calls from LA or, you know, New York's not too bad, but, but it, you know what I mean? It was just like yeah. impossible. It was just, and then it would go from like seven o'clock to like midnight. So you had like mm. two days compressed in one. It was just a nightmare, man. Um, yes. Cool. Traveling so, yeah. sucks too. Yeah. How, how often did you have to travel? By the way, um, your camera froze for whatever reason. I cannot see it anymore. Um, but it's not right. an issue. Oh, there you go. Uh, works now. Uh, yeah. How, how? So you would have to travel a lot then. If yeah. I mean, yeah. I, it's kind of like, and that's why I try. I started kind of wanting to work with the same the same people. I mean, for example, take for Axis. I mean, I've I've been working with these guys, and they're 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 so awesome. They're, so, they're a really good friend of mine. I've been working for them like I don't ten years or something. And so at, at at some point we we know each other so well that um, we could kind of do a lot of the work remotely, uh, and I'm I'm saying as as being the director on the job, right? So because mm -hmm. the problem is 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 um, uh, you know communicating com communicating your vision and making sure that the team is on the same page and that there's kind of like this this cohesive uh, and coherent idea that is kind of carried through all the way through the production, right? So having a constant dialogue with the team, making sure that they're checking the stuff when they have some cool stuff to show, you have to respond straight away. The, 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 the more, I mean, you know that stuff, you know, the, the, yeah. more, the more time there is in between a delivery and a, and a review and a delivery and a review, it's just, you know, it, it, it actually enable you um, or disable you, sorry, to be able to act fast. And, and the faster you can react, the more, the more opportunity you get to either grab that idea or to fix it or to kind of correct course and stuff like that. So um, the great thing with them is that at some point I, I would knew, I would know the, the artist and, you know, the producer so well that we would kind of, we would know each other so well that we, it would, uh, it would work quite okay to do it fairly remotely, but there's always those kind of super key stages where you need to be there and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Anyone else, you, you have to be on site. You know, I did a test for, uh, I did a test for a feature done um, in Spain, in, Ma in Madrid, uh, probably uh, two two years, three years ago. Probably more. I, I can't remember. But uh, and then I, I for for five months I traveled every week. Uh, I was just flying down every week, flying up <laughs> every weekend. It was just it was horrible. And uh, so you know they're, they're cool. They're cool things and they're great opportunities. So you can't you can't. I mean you can't freaking complain. It's it's awesome. But in the same time, the the grind of grabbing a plane in on Monday morning like a bus. Oh man, it's just. It's it's terrible, terrible. And then when you have your, your you have a family at home and stuff, yeah. it just makes everything <laughs> way more complicated. You yeah, know, it just but, becomes uh, an issue. That's yeah. True. Did you did you, did you travel a lot um, before moving here? Did you? No, did you? no, 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 no. Right. Yeah. Usually, I mean, I I don't know whether it was a a, a lot like a lucky thing or not. Right. I did move a lot, but I've ne I haven't had to travel a lot. You know. Right. Um, yeah. I moved to Germany back in 2005 um, right. we used to be in a small town called Coburg in Bavaria uh, it was super cool because it was like picturesque you had this castle on top of a mountain and the village down below nice. it's like just nice. it's like a picturesque like, like a know, Wes Anderson movie yeah post postcard postcard <laughs> image city Ch chocolate super box. safe dude yeah. the city was so safe that people just got used to uh, to leaving you know doors open and then going Dude, to work. Have you been to Switzerland? I think it's pretty much the same, isn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember it was funny because uh, the company, it was I was working at Crytek, and they, moved, they yeah. moved to Frankfurt. Right. And the first, the first mail, uh, everyone goes like, uh, Frankfurt is not Coburg. Make sure you <laughs> lock your doors. And when lock you come doors. by bike, if you come to work by bike, make, make sure you, you lock your bike as well. That first day, I think it was five or six bikes were stolen right. from, from the parking lot because people just left yeah, it man. as they were used to it, you know? <laughs> yeah, good spirited. <laughs> yeah, small, small town. But yeah, yeah I, moved, I moved, yeah, within Germany, I moved once or twice. And then when I moved to US, I was moving apartments a lot. It was just like right. always, always something, you know, trying something better or something new and but I hadn't hadn't have to travel much at all, honestly. You know, commute is it's the one thing, but like traveling to different countries to, you know, have yeah. meetings or anything like that. No. Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's, there's there are two things. I mean, if if you're, 
I mean, first of all, there are people that love that stuff. Um, oh yeah, you know, uh, you know, and, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which is cool though. I just like um, if you move for like a, if you have a particular project, like you have a shoot or you have a, a consulting thing or you know something that's kind of like short and sweet, and you mm-hmm. know exactly how many days you're gone. The problem is the is the repeating kind of like you know the. Uh, if if it's a if it's a production long kind of trip or you're on a let's say you're on a on a on a feature and you're you know you have to go to Pinewood and you can't be really like uh, you can't be really in central London or if you live in London you have to travel all the way there outside to where the studio is really far and stuff then some of these some how of these far the studio just, is like was it like two hours away from London yeah or? it's it's not close man I mean it's and then they have Leavesden which is even even it's just the problem with London is just like getting out of the of central London it takes you takes you two and a half hours you know because it there's no there's no motorways there's do, do you know what I mean there's no yeah, big yeah. access so it's just small roads, man, until you actually hit the circle or, you know, the M25, which is, yeah. you know, like in Paris, the, the peripheric, you know, you have this kind of like massive ring around uh, London, which is, uh, you know, dividing. Uh, it's, it's, it's much bigger. It's much further away than just central London. But it, do you know what I mean? And hit, you, you yeah, hit yeah. that ring. I, and I, and I then was driving take, there when I was. Yeah, when yeah. Was, yeah. For sure. So it, until you hit that ring, you're pretty screwed. You're pretty screwed. <laughs> you just, you know. So it takes forever, man. It really, really is. Is uh, is a it's a journey. Uh, so the only thing you have, you know, you, you do is either you have to, yeah, you, you commute. I mean, some people commute like crazy uh, if they have to work to to some of these uh, studios. All they all they just uh, sleep there in hotels during the week. Yeah. Um, which is another story. Hotels, man. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> That's Ugh. the thing. Unless it's like first. <laughs> Like, I would guess like four seasons, then yeah. But when 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 does that happen though? <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're like a VIP, maybe. Then. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the glamour of uh, traveling for work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I think it's kind of like, you know, having the chance, having the chance to work with different teams and uh, experience different, uh, you know, working in different for different clients, different productions in different countries. It is awesome. I mean, it is very, very cool. Um, it's just obviously logis- logistically. And this yeah. is why, I mean, obviously this is super, it, it's changed, completely changed now as well. I mean, I think, you know, the ability to do conference calls and Skype and, and you know, oh, yeah. shut and whatever, you know, you can do so much stuff remotely anyways. But uh, yeah. What, yeah. Do you, what do you think it's going actually? Because like uh, the other the other day I was reading news I, I rarely actually I wasn't reading news. It was just someone sharing something on Facebook that was like, "Oh, right. okay." I never read news anymore. Like it's been a year now since I haven't looked at any news. It's so right. it's, it's such. A, you mean you mean you mean news of the world or like, news? Yeah, of yeah, industry? news <laughs> news in general. Like in yeah. general, anything industry, nothing. Um, right, right. Yeah, like if something shares something that means it's worth looking into. So uh, we have this, you have this kind of eco chamber kind of uh, uh, understanding and view of I the just world. Just don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much going on in life to you know yeah. pay attention to anything. And yeah. you know, I think I think my I you, my my wa- awakening was when when you know when the whole election madness started because everyone yeah. on the Facebook Insane. and their friends and brothers and sisters were fucking posting about elections all the time. I was like, God, like, I want to read something cool, not this mm-hmm. shit over and over. So I basically unsubscribed yeah. from everyone, pos- almost everyone possible, like, fuck news, I'm not going to read them. Um, yeah. I actually took that lesson about news from Tim Ferriss, who, you know, who right. said, like, I don't read news if, if, if something really important happens in the world that I really, really, really need to know about, I'm pretty sure someone on the street will tell me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, and it's a, the world is ending. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you didn't have to, you didn't see it coming, so you don't have to yeah. suffer, <laughs> all, you know, all leading to that point. Yeah, and I, I, um, I, I hear you, man. I just, you know, definitely the world is going in crazy places. We were, we were moving out of Canada and moving into the state as, um, as your, as this lovely new president was uh, being inaugurated. <laughs> so. It was pretty brutal. I was like, <laughs> what are we doing? Like, everyone's just going the other way, man. Hey, man. Um, did you see... Yeah, did you see brave, uh, brave what, was that, what was that movie? Um, Idiocracy. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's literally great. what's happening. It's, it's literally that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so enough about news. You know? Yeah, yeah, fuck that. Anyways, yeah, what yeah. I was saying is I don't read news. <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, so, but what news did you read? 
but we no, I think we were originally talking about traveling, commute, and yeah. all that stuff. And, and where is it going in terms of uh, in terms of you know remote productions, right? Is oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was curious, like, what do you think about it? Because like the other day, I was reading, I, I stumbled upon this article uh, about the company that's behind WordPress. And they right. basically just, re they, I think it was this month or last month, they closed their offices and just everyone who is working there just works from home. And the reason they said, like, we have majority of the people working from home anyways. You know, it's just slowly turning into that. So, Yeah, I, I know that, that companies like, you know, Microsoft and bigger, bigger entities like that are actually pushing people to do that. Uh, it's cost effective uh, for sure. Yeah, they'll pay more. They'll they'll give advantages and things like that. I think, I think people. I mean, uh, sadly, people work more. I think when they work from home, I'm sure they do. True. I, I mean, the, the, you know, the thing though is is um, I think the sense of community is is where losing that completely is become a problem. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? I, I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm not talking about. Hey, the chit chat or the this when you come in the office, and so, sometimes it's like uh, you know, it's, are you a people person or not? And and having to uh, you know to, I think socializing to to in 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 a in a creative in a in a creative space is I think it is important because I I think you're you're finding yourself wanting to be if you're a storyteller, you want to be part of a conversation. Or at least you're yeah. start you're starting a conversation, right? Um, not having any conversation or not, not understanding what are the, con the conversations that are going on. I'm not talking about trend. I'm not talking about, you know, but just, just you know, the, the tone, the, the palpable kind of like reality of just kind of uh, uh, understanding, you know, the nuances of, of, uh, of where people are at. You know, I think it's. I think it is something that's important. It's important also to not just be like in an echo chamber, of not just like being completely like, living in the bubbles that you actually artificially create by only targeting certain things on the internet, which I, I do all the time. I mean, I, I kind of like, you know, I have my list of subscription on, on YouTube. Uh, I don't really do Facebook very much, but it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's that kind of, you know, you choose your Twitter feeds and, and then that's all yeah. you, re that's all you really expose yourself to. Right. Um, the danger of that is like very quickly, it just narrows your, your, not your understanding of the world, but it's like, it just really narrows your, the possibility of discovering new shit and, and, and talking to people you might not really hear about and, and all that stuff. Forget about politics and stuff, just in terms yeah. of like, you know, stories and, and ideas and stuff, you know? So that's the only danger, you know, in terms of technically and practically, uh, working with artists all around the world and, 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 you know, collaborating with like talents from, from everywhere. That's just awesome. I mean, that, that is incredible. Um, the only issue is, is when you work in a, in a close, uh, studio where there are, um, you know, there's kind of like issues of like, sh sh you know, sharing material and, and, uh, uh, you know, secrecy in terms of, pri you know, in terms of the files, then it be then that can become kind of like, suddenly you realize how limiting that is. If suddenly like yeah. your pool of talent needs to be like local, dude, it just becomes super hard, you know, because we're all so used to kind of work with each other from, from everywhere. Right. Yeah. It's um, true. true. you know, and some clients, you know, some massive clients that you know, you work with and, you know, um, very often they have some some pretty hardcore you know rules and stuff uh which some studios can suffer from do you know what i mean yeah film film does that a lot you know yeah i mean the whole the whole union yeah. the, the whole existence of union is basically that because yeah you cannot be <clears throat> in the film union unless you live in california or in in united states generally because there are like different unions now in you know, in Louisiana and, you know, North Carolina and all those places where they started outsourcing sure. or, you know, putting the <coughs> movie production in. Yeah. But it all starts in, in LA and you have to be in LA or live in California, at least for the time period you're getting admitted to the union in order to even be considered, you know, as a union yeah. member. Otherwise, yeah, you just cannot work in movies. <laughs> it's so localized and it's so difficult yeah. to get into. It's kind of crazy, but I mean, I, I get why the protections are there. I mean, you know, people that work in the union and been been working in the union, you know, they want to protect their market. Uh, and it's also, you know, directors. And you know, it. like when you work with people, 
uh, you come back to the same people that you enjoyed working with and you know mm -hmm. and you trust that they will deliver they might not be the best artists in the world you might have much better you know people in your area that can yeah. deliver the job that's gonna be maybe a little better rendered or maybe the design choice is gonna be a little better but you never know them what are they gonna deliver on time or how well they take criticism or you know feedback or anything like that and it's yeah. becoming an issue <laughs> I was talking to one of the art directors uh, <coughs> privately from the film, uh, from w one of those uh, you know film studios, the the VFX studios in in yeah. um, in London, and he was saying, "You would be surprised how many big names that everyone are praising are out there that just cannot you cannot work with because they are yeah. just impossible to work with." And yeah. I was like, "Wow, okay, <laughs> makes a lot of yeah, sense." Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, take, take, uh, you know, that's, there's no, there's no, uh, um, uh, it's not accidents that, you know, Scorsese will work with Caprio. And I mean, this is, you know, classic example, but, you know, Nolan will work with his kind of four fetish actors. You know, it's like there, there, there is a, there's a, a comfort, there's a friendship, but there's also like an understanding of like what you're trying to deliver and at what level you're, you're working, you know, yeah. what level you're working at. And, and cutting through that bullshit is huge in terms of kind of like, you know, having this kind of creative connection yeah. with people yeah. uh, and not having to re-explain or reintroduce or, you know, trying to re-establish those kind of like bridges and connections and similar taste or, or very small little understanding of like why this is not working and or what do I like and what do you like and what does that mean when we we have this conversation? Do you know what I mean? And yeah, abs absolutely, man. It's the, those are those are they're not just shortcuts. They're not they're not just time savers. They're just creatively you find people that you align with and and like you said, it's not really about. It's another thing to do with the the skills is is only the first step that you know my subjectivity leads you towards someone or another, right? Yeah. Uh, taste is is subjective, so you know, and skill skill and taste are are intertwined somehow. Do you know what I mean? So it depends on on what style it is, and therefore the skill is whatever. You know, so I think that stuff is not super relevant. It's more about yeah, how meeting great people that you get along with creatively is 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 half of the battle for sure. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, I always find this whenever I start personally when I start working on a new project, whether it's film, game, any you know, you name it, commercial. Um, it's always that first couple of, you know, submissions and sort of like getting connection with the director or production designer, yeah. like trying yeah. to figure out like, what is exactly the language you're speaking? You know, we, we both mm -hmm. speak English, you know, we, we, we both can communicate. You can tell me about, you can tell me everything about your ideas and send me all the references in the world, but you might have that one thing that you particularly like, uh, yeah. about the art, you know, or <clears throat> you have yeah. the, the spe specific design choices or, you know, the direction in which the paintings are going or what are you like sketches or paintings or 3D more, you know, all of the kind of stuff that yeah. is very relevant for a successful and, you know, straightforward, quick production process. And I, I, I feel like that's, I, that's what you're talking about. That's like that, mm -hmm. the half of the success of the project, not not whether you're like the best artist in the world per se, mm -hmm. you know, like your renders are beautiful, but can you deliver or can you iterate on those renders really quickly uh, and within yeah, the language and that I speak, you know? Exactly, because it's kind of like, you know, we might look at a, uh, you know, a, a piece by Moebius or, or uh, Francis Bacon or wh whatever, right? <coughs> or like watch a movie. <coughs> we, we might see uh, things, we might appreciate the work, both of us, but maybe we look at different things, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I think, um, I think it's kind of like getting what, understanding like what people, uh, what, what makes them tick. Uh, and, and, and then when you start, because that's the way, I mean, at least from my perspective, which is kind of like from the director working with the team and, and, uh, making sure that you have the right talent at the right place yeah. and there, that they can elevate everything because they are, you know, position in a place of strength rather than, than being challenged uh, by a misunderstanding of like their skill sets and therefore they keep on kind of like uh, stumbling, you know, because they don't quite get it. And it's not that they're failing, it's just like that it's not compatible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, and so I think, you know, you know having that understanding is, is huge because then it's, it's all about 
bouncing idea and and elevate it rather than just kind of like missing each other you know what i mean um and you know and, and sometimes it doesn't work sometimes it's kind of like you know sometimes you 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 know compatible with people and they can be super awesome and very skilled and and it doesn't quite gel um yeah. and that's okay and then sometimes people are just blowing the shit out of and they're so freaking a level above you that you go whatever man just do it just do, do it your, do your thing. <laughs> yeah that's, that's, there are projects like that where it's just like yeah, it just clicks so rapidly and whatever this just the same it's, it's almost like you're a twin brother of a person you're working with and For it sure. just like clicks and works yeah. works works yeah, i had yeah. that i had that working with uh, for the most of the time working with Rupert Sanders uh, on Ghost right. in the Shell, where he just literally sent me a note, like, work on this, and I would send, uh, you know, a couple of renders, and then he would just come back, now work on this. <laughs> like, what about you that know, stuff? It's, oh, it's already done. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and, and that's awesome. And it's it's credit to him to to put you in the right situation. It's credit to you to just deliver. And, and, and But I think there is, like, there is this thing of... Uh, you know, if you when you find like you're describing is when you find the right combination, yeah. uh, it just rolls, man. It's and it's that's when you. I think that's when you do your best work, though, because you know it is. It you have you have the constraint of the project, so it's not like everyone does whatever they want. There is still like a framework for you to yeah. to together achieve something, uh, but there's great freedom within, right? And that's just awesome. And if you trust the other one and you let that stuff kind of like come through. Uh, and, and, and it's, it's a series of successes rather than just kind of like, you know, one step forward to step backwards kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> uh, which very, very happens very often. Um, uh, then that's, that's when the, yeah, that's, that's, that's where it very it clicks and, and you have, you have the most fun. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, the, the, the you know, the, uh, the Harry Potter sequence that I directed mm -hmm. for David Yates was pretty much like that. I mean, I, I, you know, I sat down with him. Um, I remember being, you know, getting a phone. I was in LA, got a phone call. He wanted to meet, flew back to London. And I met with him for, I swear to you, man, for like 45 minutes. We were just not really chatting about the sequence itself. We were just chatting about art and, <laughs> and you know, just taste and tone. And, you know, and we were just kind of like more... It was almost like we were fantasizing about, hey, you know, what would be an animated Harry Potter world look like? And it was right. just, we were just having a, not a brainstorm, but just more like kind of figuring out what we're just describing now is figuring out if creatively we would align. Uh, yeah. And at no point we disagree. I, I, it was just look, all the, all the references, we, we understood them. All the uh, all the, the callback to this and that and oh what about this and that was super exciting and I saw that play the other day and it was just like this kind of like it was super it was super uh, simple you know in some ways you know it was not contrived it was not forced we're not trying to impress each other with like my my knowledge of like this and that it was not about that it was just it was very very um, yeah it was just it was just very kind of like easy and natural and 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 uh, and that led to him i mean it led to me kind of walking out of the meeting and him going like hey let's just let's just make it it was no it was it, there was no point of saying like well i need to see uh, so many concepts and a storyboard and this and that so we can actually make sure we're on the same page yeah. it was just the first meeting was like yeah let's just make let's just make something uh how, and how I th often I that, that happens trust, to you I'm, I'm just curious um i you know it's it's i think i've been really lucky uh for it to happen Fairly often, and I, I think it's been, it's it's like a, it's been a. Uh, um, um, I've always I've always tried to push as much as I could, um, you know, not 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 push my style because it, I think that sounds that sounds wrong, uh, because I'm I'm very you know I I like kind of like working on people's project and kind of mm -hmm. like and 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 work with their ideas and kind of like, but um, more often than not, I, I end up just massaging it in a way that um, I guess my my visual uh, taste are just kind of rise to the surface, you know, right, enough, naturally. Enough, enough that uh, more and more of, more often than not, people will come to, to f will come to ask for that, uh, for that thing. You, you know what I mean? So therefore, yeah, yeah. therefore at that point, it's less about, uh, it's more about, hey, what's your take on this, 
rather than you know rather than uh, uh, you know say hey it needs to look that way and uh, you know can you deliver that do, do you know what I mean yeah uh, yeah um, and and I think I think it's kind of like in some ways it's a it's it's really cool but it's also a curse because what it means is that there's a lot of project that people will not come to me for uh, which I could probably do. Uh, maybe I'm not saying I would do it better than the person that, you know, do you know what I mean? But it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, then at, at some point people know you so well for the things that you do or for that, that, uh, you know, that, that, that slight, uh, style that you have, uh, that at that point it, it kind of limits some of the things that you yeah. get to pitch on. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of interesting, you know? <laughs> No, yeah, I, I completely agree and, <coughs> and understand it even from an uh, artist's perspective because I, I face same challenges when, mm -hmm. when it comes to my work. And on the one end, I think doing personal projects kind of helps to yeah. like break through that ice wall of like, or totally. you know, the, the box that is just enclosing and enclosing. Because if I haven't done personally, for instance, any of my uh, concepts that I did for shows, like, you know, I, my, my personal projects like Showtime or personal illustrations that are more like sci-fi driven, I would never yeah. work on Ghost in the Shell. Like just, yeah. that's oh, as absolutely. simple as that. Absolutely. Um, there was a series of events that happened for me to actually get to know Rupert Sanders. Mm -hmm. And one of those events was just starting my own projects, you know, because yeah. otherwise I'll be doing The Last of Us 5 or... <laughs> <laughs> the the knockoffs of the Last of Us, <laughs> which which is, not, which, is not, which is not that bad because Last of Us is pretty awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I know what you mean. Imagine I, I, imagine painting the I same know, thing over yeah. and over yeah, and yeah. over and over. For sure, for sure. No, no, I, I know, I know what you mean. But I, I think you're right. It's it's like you know making sure that you give yourself enough space to uh, yeah. to um, to experiment, not to, or, or to kind of explore different things, and if. Again, if you need, if you have the need for it, I mean, it's, it's, some people are, I'm always very impressed with people that just stick with one style and just get so freaking good at it. Mm -hmm. And, and they become, they, be, they become famous for that style. Illustrators are, are from, I mean, my wife is an illustrator and I can see like she's, um, you know, she's, she's frequently kind of like, you know, showing me work and, and it's incredible. Like people's work have been, you know, used and, and duplicated uh onto you know that they'll have a very recognizable one or two thing and then it's just yeah. applied to everything and it's, this is my nightmare this is like you know but some people are, are incredible good at that and I, this is my nightmare it's like the idea that i'll do one thing and then it would just be repeat and repeat and repeat like 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 you're saying is you know in in this in the same way i'm saying it's like you know it's a curse because you know you you have it's you have to reinvent yourself all the time um, or actually resell yourself all the time. Yeah. But the, re, the, the, the opposite of that, which is, you know, only doing the one thing is, is can be, can be quite exhausting. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, yeah, I agree. You know? Yeah. I know a couple of artists that are, that are like that. And when you, when you talk to them, you quickly realize that they're just, it's just a mindset, you know, that they're yeah. like super yeah. focused on mm -hmm. pretty much anything that happens in their life, like any other trades that they, that they deal with are, you know, are uh, handled in the same way that they handle art. A sure. great example is talking to Vitaly Bulgarov. You know Vitaly, obviously. Sure, You've sure, seen sure. his work. Yeah. Um, he has a very distinguished style of his work. He pretty much invented uh, for a lot of artists what kid bashing mm -hmm. is, you know. Like, yeah. But the, like yeah. in the proper way, he he, made <coughs> his you know his approach to do uh, 3D stuff with CAD, for instance, like you know yeah. uh, Moi 3D or Fusion 360 or any of those software, that's the movement that I would say he started, because mm -hmm. like after after people learned like how do you do those super intensive details? Oh, I do it this way, and then there was a bunch of artists that should you know started to pop up with their uh, experimentations and, um, and and artworks done very similar way but when you when you look at his um, life and, and how he deals with everything else like for instance I'll tell you this so he has a keyboard uh, just to, just to sort of like tells you, tells you everything about him he has a keyboard that has built-in software to heat map keystrokes. And based on the heat map, he will constantly or periodically look into the heat map itself and see which of the shortcuts that he's using 
are too far from where the most efficient way of using shortcut is. Right. And then change those shortcuts and, you know, train himself to be faster with the new position of those shortcuts that he's using. Right, right. Um, wow, man. And Jeez. when you look at him work, it's like, <laughs> hey, man, can you stop the video and, and actually show how you work? Because, like, I don't want to look at the time lapse of, of, of yeah, you yeah. know. It's like it looks like time lapse. Like literally, the the, the speed of work, is just like oh my god, what the fuck. Yeah, that's it, it's it's kind of crazy to hear things like that. I mean, I yeah, I, uh, yeah I'm but it I'm tells way you about the character. School. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. it's the character, but it's also maybe like uh, the essence of the art they create. There is a precision. There is a I mean, and also the style. I mean, it's kind of like, for example, I would imagine is is process at iterating. You know, yeah. when we when we're just drawing and and re re you know uh, reworking that same line over and over again and having this kind of back and forth with eraser or whatever uh, step back you know whatever whatever it is that you have is it's it's these kind of processes being you know synthesized and 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 made and made perfect right made super efficient yeah <laughs> <laughs> but there is something about his designs you know uh, and I don't know all of it but there's a, there's a there's a, a clean line there's an efficiency about it there's a, a, a technicality that is so precise. Like, yeah, like you're saying, it's, it it yep. doesn't surprise me, you know, that it's that it's like that. Whereas uh, whereas people are maybe a bit looser in their art and a bit more kind of like uh, less kind of like defined uh, would probably find techniques like that very uh, very uh, uh, suffocating. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I always find it fascinating talking to him because it just like shows you how different people are and you know how how intense his character is. You know, mm -hmm. um, what. I, I usually try to compare it to myself in a way because I like m myself is the best reference for me, <laughs> obviously, and I'm like completely different. I I just couldn't imagine myself to go in the, in such a length to you know to produce one thing over and over and get yeah. to like um, have almost every single aspect in of the production of that thing be nailed down to the perfection. You know, mm -hmm, uh, which mm -hmm. is, you know. Crazy. Do you uh, do you sketch stuff? Do you? Uh, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like to do everything. Like I've, yeah. when yeah, you look too. at the work that I produce, it's it's like I find myself to be like a one man one man orchestra almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're a one man band. Yeah. yeah. I go I go I go I go in length of you know creating different things. Like recently, yeah. I started looking into Manga Studio, for instance, and and really right. trying to replicate that you know 80s 90s look of of animes you know yeah uh, in stills and looking into been looking into animation itself and it's always uh, the sort of like the cutoff point is for me how long i can remain interested and not right. be tired with it because the yeah, moment i get yeah. tired i just move on and and try something else and and sometimes I will power through. There's some projects that I work on, especially personal projects where I just like feel I need to power through specific things because mm -hmm. you kind of need to struggle a little bit every every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, if yeah, everything I, is too yeah. easy, you, you, you just become stagnant. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, do you, so do you find that the, the technique, is it important for you to, to have, to touch a lot of different, te you know, techniques and so 3D and 2D and, you know, different yeah. styles and is it something that, so as long as it excites you, it's something that you're, you're, you're drawn towards? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But that's pretty much uh, a description of, of, of myself. There mm -hmm. are certain things that I've done uh, for such a long time already that are becoming sort of like this, um, like a backup plan plan for me. Right, um, yeah, yeah, the, com the comfort zone. Yeah, the comfort zone, exactly. <laughs> you know, when I work for a client yeah. and I know the deadlines are short and they, ex yeah, they have yeah, specific yeah. expectations, uh, this is this is what I'm going to do, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, for sure, for sure. But there are projects where I can just try things and I usually try to like, I don't know, I find myself to be very risky uh, recently <laughs> with the clients. That's good, though. That's good. Where, I, where it's just like approach it in a way where it might mean that I'm going to have to put much more hours into, right. you know, much more hours than I actually get paid for. Uh, but I, f I feel like it's worth trying because it might also mean that the project will become also um, sort of like a learning process for me. Yeah. And then right. it opens to, it opens to exactly different avenues afterwards. And yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think there's also probably like your, your safe zone becomes such a controlled, you know, you, you just, you just know you can deliver that. 
you know, yeah, if, and if it's, all fails, you can probably kind of like save it in yeah. some ways, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of those things where like when I have to do it, not always, but there, there are times where I know I have to sort of like fall back and, and mm -hmm. you know, work with the techniques that I'm most comfortable with. It's just like, yeah. I don't want to work in this, man. <laughs> It's just like I lose yeah. interest so so yeah, so, so quickly because it's just like been a decade of of doing the same thing over and over, and it's just like yeah. there's something in in my character specifically, and I guess you're in in a way similar, you know, maybe not as as similar, but but still you're interested with different things. Yeah, like, like you said, you're not <clears throat> one like you're not into like you know zero to hundred into one thing only, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, ab absolutely not. But I, I find. Um, I think I think at some point I'm, I I did make a choice, and I think mm -hmm. that choice was more, um, you know, was more about uh, I think you know it, it it was basically looking at you know should should I just start learning kind of like new new uh, you know should I learn modeling and 3D and all that kind of for example that's that which is one of one of the the bigger thing you can do if you're working on, you know, on, on 2D artwork and or, you know, working obviously with team of CG of CG artists and, and you know, directing kind of some some anime, you know, animation being 2D mm -hmm. or, or CG. And then at some point you go, like, hey, you know, you fancy, you fancy because I, I create a lot of art. So it's like, hey, I'd love to kind of make a model of this and that. So there's always there's, there's very often there's been that 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 uh, uh, question mark like, oh, I'll be so great to be able to to dive into it because it right. is all all these tools are so fun and they're so great. Um, and, but, but I think at some point I made that, that decision to, to, because of the time consuming nature of, uh, of, of, uh, uh, of the, the directing part and the, uh, having to, um, uh, I think the amount of, of, uh, I think it, it kind of becomes very different than being on the box, right? It's yeah. kind of like, you know, being on the box, uh, which I, I love because I come from fine arts and drawing. And so it, it's, to me, it's, I, I need to do it. I, it's just something that I need to create these images. I want to create these images, even if they're not relevant to what I'm trying to do, uh, I'm still making stuff, um, you know, but it, but is at some point there's the making process, which escape, which uh, it has to escape you at some point because you have to be able to uh, utilize the talents out there and, you know, all these, 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 you know, yourself and all these people are so much, they're so amazing. They're so amazing at what they do. Uh, and I want to work with these guys. You know, I just, I'm, I'm not trying and not, I'm saying like you should try to I'm not trying to duplicate anyone, but it's like I want to. I better concentrate on cre on on bringing the create the right creatives to the people that I want to work with, rather than just you know. Do you know what I mean? And I think that was yeah. a clear, that was a clear uh, decision to say, hey, you know, I, all these kids making CG, awesome stuff. I'm like, I I just I want them to work on my stuff. You, you know, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Which is which is you know which is. Um, uh, there's there's no point. The only point, and that's where it's very important, is is to understand enough when you're directing a team of of uh, animators yeah. and, and modelers and textures and all that kind of stuff layout, uh, is to understand enough of the packages and and enough of the technology that your that your team is and your production is is using that when you make creative decisions, you understand the consequences of it. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's, that's where it can be extremely damaging if you have absolutely no idea what you're, you have no idea of the technology that's behind, um, you know, what's actually rendering your stuff. Because then you just, you're, you're throwing creative ideas around or you're cutting things out or you're, you're carrying on iterating to a certain point where, if you knew that to do that small change, it means that the chain, the chain reaction of that is literally five days away. You know what I mean? To get a new yeah. version or I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean? It's kind of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is where it can be super, it, it goes out of control. So, you know, for me, it was like, hey, I just need to know enough to be able to talk to the guys, you know, to understand, mm -hmm. you know, uh, where I'm coming from, which is from the, you know, creative and just feed that stuff to to the team and and be there as a as a as a keeper you know yeah rather yeah. than be on the box but uh, but there's always that thing of kind of like wanting to sit down and do some of the stuff and not having the time to sit down at all ever because you you you're reviewing so many elements of the production that there's no, there's no time for you to sit down do you know what i mean so generally what i do is uh, i'll storyboard my stuff um 
and I'll, I'll, I'll do the first pass of concept art mm -hmm. to, to establish the look and to have that uh, direct uh, dialogue with the clients. And then from that point on, I just, I just move away from the actual uh, creating of assets or art and yeah. stuff, uh, which, which so far has, has worked quite, quite, yeah, or collaborate. Delegating yeah. is a dirty thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, I mean, when you find, I mean, you know, people are so talented, man. It's just like, you know, you're collaborating with these people. They come yeah, in and true. They, make, they make, they make a better, better, word. better shit than you can do anyway. So it's kind of like, it's just, again, like we we're saying before, it's finding the right people and get them, get them, you know, in the right place. And then it just fucking, it's fire, you know, it's great. But it's, um, yeah. So, so again, it's that, is that choice, you know, that for, for that I, I feel I had to make at some point, maybe at some point when I get you know, when I can sit back down and have more time, I'll get to it. But I think you're, you're then at that point, you know, when I have, when I have more uh, free time, let's put it that way, I just literally, I'll, I'll read, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll read script. I, I have to work on script. I work with writers. So it, there is, there's also that, that layer, which, uh, which doesn't allow for just sitting at the box to kind of create stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. also like figuring out what, what is the actual substance of it and the material. You know, so, uh, yeah, but you know, it's, there's, there's plenty of, there's plenty of artists out there to, that you want to work with. And that's, that's the great, that's the great thing about filmmaking is it's such a, a collaborative effort, uh, that putting the team together is just so much fun, man. So much fun. Yeah. There's only X amount of hours in a day that you yeah. can, you know, uh, yeah. And then delegate. there's a family and then there's the weekends and then there's you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, you know, yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that. How do you, but you know, how do you manage your time? Actually, I'm curious. Well, I'm, I'm way, I'm, you know, I think I've, I think we were talking about this last time we, we, uh, we met. Mm -hmm. Um, I, f I feel that, uh, uh, you know, I, f I feel, um, old now in a way that I'm like, I feel very contempt with, um, uh, you know, the, not, the feeling not, old is, by the way, it's not it, running. It's, I don't, don't want to run anymore. You, you, run get, anymore. you get to feel oh, older great. with time. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to gray. I, I kind of like, you know, there's, I think there's a point, and I think that collaboration is, is the important, the important word is that yeah. uh, you don't run as you don't have to run as as fast and as far to get those collaboration going, and therefore there is all this kind of like fighting and. To, to get the, the ideas through and to and to get the teams going and stuff that that stuff is is not a comfort zone but it is a little bit there, there's mm -hmm. there's a part of uh, of uh, I've been doing I've been doing you know directing and animation directs for probably about 15 years so it's been a while and so you know now there certainly are uh, uh, productions which are way easier to set up than others and are or creatives which are are easier than others but um, I like concentrating on that and then finding the next one rather than just constantly running in between as well which um yeah. which i don't i don't feel the need so much to do that anymore um i you know i i feel i feel fulfilled during the production you know and and therefore when you go out of when you when you finish and you deliver and and the product comes out and you know it, it's more of a time to kind of like recollect and re reconnect with material um, you know, and, and just start. And I, I really also enjoyed, I've done, I've done a little bit of uh, consulting on movies and, uh, you know, things which are less about, uh, doing and more, more less about doing and more about, uh, you know, ad ad advising and looking and, and having conversation about the material that is in front of you and, and helping creatively figuring, figuring shit out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that comes with a little bit with your experience, uh, wherever you are in the in the movie uh industry or or what's kind of like what's your uh uh you know stage if you like or you know what what part of the process you can actually kind of plug in and out of productions and that i really enjoy i think it's it's a very it's very rewarding without feeling like oh it's just it's it's it has to be mine it has to be me creating it and me doing it and it, i just you know that stuff is is uh is less important and i think at some point it, it it's okay if it is because it just it's that that driving force that gets you to learn new things and interacting with your peers and asking questions and you know what I mean all of that stuff I just I just feel like I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of stepping back and and it's right. it's kind of it's very rewarding so I, I really like doing that you you get to care about the product 
and how it ends um, or how it ends up looking rather than the credit that you're getting yeah, for it. Exactly. And, and actually, um, you know, working with, and I know you guys do that and, and it's awesome that, you know, the, the learn, you know, the, uh, you know, the courses and the stuff that you're doing, it's super, super cool. And it, it's kind of like that a little bit, right? It's the idea yeah. that you're, you're, you have certain ways to do it and it's about, Hey, looking at other people's work and looking how their ways and say, Hey, what about try this and try that? It's not do this and do that, but it's like trying to guide, you know, some of those processes. And I think you, you learn from it. Uh, they learn from it. You have a conversation, so there's interaction, there's a community, and I think that stuff is is uh, is super important. But it's almost something that you know it comes with with you having done a certain amount of work that there is valuable things to share. You know, yeah. um, failures or successes. There's a lot of failures, so you know it's uh, it's good to share that stuff too. <laughs> and uh, and uh, that that side of that that side of the coin is is uh, is very cool actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I find it interesting too. I mean, I'm not consulting to films or anything like that personally, but um, I'm running the school with Ash and, and Andrew. Uh, we're running Learn Squared. And in a way, we are sort of consulting to pretty much uh -huh. any class that is coming out. We are super involved in, in the creation process where, you know, from the moment of initial conversation to crafting um, the outline of what the class is going to be together with the instructor helping with you know setting up the equipment or like just making sure that the whole process looks like actual production yeah and you sort of like give your own input to to what this production could look like and what what the best result could be for a student mm -hmm. you know yeah because we've done we've done it for a year and a half now it's and we're building the experience uh. constantly changing it's kind of funny because like almost every course release we have there's like a new thing, like a new tweak that is always added, you know, based on the knowledge that we've gathered. And there's like a bunch yeah. of changes that we we're working on that are going to be, you know, probably ground shaking to the, mm -hmm. to the whole school, but we'll see. But there are changes for better because we know like, okay, this definitely doesn't work. And it's like, it, it, it leaves you with that, with that experience of like, I've helped as much as I could, mm -hmm. but then I also have learned something and I wish I could turn back time and, come back and implement that thing that I've just learned, you know? Yeah. Man, imagine, imagine like, yeah, I mean, all these resources and all these, I think the, the dialogue with uh, current artists, you know, like being able to reach out to people you admire and you like, or you want to work with, or you want to ask questions. And it's, it's crazy, man. I mean, it's like when I was, you know, uh, back in whatever, 1995 and doing design school in London is, I, I, you know, he couldn't reach out to anyone, man. You know, it's kind of yeah. like there was no channels. There is no, there's no real way to kind of get some insight. Even, even, I'm not saying like send. You could probably send your portfolio never hear ever again from anyone because he would not get anywhere. I mean, do you know what I mean? Is is um, it's interesting, kind of like how different it is. And I remember kind of graduating uh, in 1999 uh, and then going around all the design uh, companies in London. I mean, at least the one that I like, uh, I liked at the time, and then try, you know, knock on their door with your massive printed portfolio of like, mm -hmm. post, like you know, fake posters and, and whatever CD covers and shit like that. And, and, uh, and, and just having, you know, just having this, it was great because it was a face-to-face -face thing. So I think that's always an interesting thing, but just the idea you didn't have online portfolios, you didn't have any kind of like communities where by the time you graduate, you're already part of a, convers of a conversation. You didn't know about that studio hiring and this and that. And do you know what I mean? It was, it just didn't work like that. Um, yeah. yeah, it feels ancient, man. You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 It's changing <laughs> constantly. It's, it's yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious, you know, where, mm -hmm. where this is all going because I, you know, I, I'm, I completely relate to what you're saying. I remember um, it was 2006 or 2007 when I was like really obsessed about uh, matte painting, for instance, and right. I was uh, teaching myself uh, how the, <coughs> the whole matte painting process works. And that's where I was actually talking with, I think it was Framestore that I was talking with first. Sure. 
And I remember like talking to professionals who are working in the industry. Yeah, you have to send DVD and they review it, oh, make yeah, sure like the, the DVD reel. is like yeah, the show reel, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I'll be just like working on that DVD, looking at how, how this could look and like how do I yeah. send it, where do I send it. Today it's just like you email and the link, you know? Yeah. Tomorrow yeah. is just like here's my here's my, you know, art station profile. Yeah. And you know, who knows how it's gonna how it's going to be a decade from now or two decades yeah. from now. It's just my, moving so fast. Yeah, my first show was were, were on VHSs, man. <laughs> Damn, yeah, that's how old I am. <laughs> Damn, dude, VHS is when I was watching all those karate movies and martial arts movies, you know. Yeah, yeah, like the yeah. Bruce Lee and the, boot, you know, the bootleg, the bootleg, Van Damme, yeah, yeah, all the bootleg, <laughs> all the bootleg shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 obviously coming from the UK, you had the PAL and NTSC crap, you know, yeah. that stuff was just a nightmare. Yeah. So I it's, remember it's, that it's too. It's like, yeah. which one should I choose? Like, one is in Japan and one is in Europe. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, why did there, there can't just be one frame for everything? Different. Frame rates is different, and yeah, uh, and it was just so bad. And it would, and particularly for animation, because you know the twenty nine 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 and the twenty four nine seven whatever frame rates were different, and it's a huge difference when you're talking about frame per second and stuff like that right uh when you're making and and the NT, I don't know, it was it was it was absolutely a, a technical nightmare but it's and there are there are technical nightmares today that are probably equivalent but uh um it was yeah it was very physical you know what i mean yeah the, yeah, yeah. Is the either and everything's in kind of like you know on vimeo in the cloud and art station and and then you have like this incredible vast collection of incredible art everywhere yeah. which i think that's the, probably the the you know the the challenging side of things it's kind of like now you're you know as much as it was hard to reach out to people now it is very easy to reach out so you have so much kind of like it's so much there's so much noise um being good or or, or bad or interesting or less interesting or derivative mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter but it's like it's it's uh, uh it's it's fascinating just the amount of stuff man it's crazy yeah crazy, i find it crazy. I find it uh, interesting and challenging in a way that, yes, it's much easier to uh, to get to expose yourself and sort of like get your out <laughs> get your art out there for everyone to see. Yeah. But because it just becomes so saturated, it's much more difficult to actually, you know, be noticed. Mm -hmm. And you know, sure. and I'm, I'm I'm guessing like if if you are looking for artists, I'm pretty sure you work with artists that you already. Uh, you already know. Uh, actually, yeah. I think you got a shout out from from David Tilton on the on the chat. Hey. <laughs> he works with you, right, at Luma? I think he does. Yeah, there you go. He's <laughs> actually one of uh, one of the one of uh, Learn Squared students, as, as far as I remember. One of the the, yeah, the good see. one of the good guys. The yeah, good guys. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like it's much more difficult to get noticed. And I I, I guess from a perspective of uh, director, art director, anything like that, it's just like finding someone. It just be, it just becomes this. Oh, I'm tired from looking at all of this good stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And this is where this is where um, originality, uh, you know, uh, personality is huge, like yeah. massive, because. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and I'm, I'm not talking about personality to get out there, but it's just like infuse personality in your work. Just figure out what you're about and just make art that that doesn't echo anything else. You know what I mean? And we all get inspired by everything, and we all have bits and bobs of things that we love and we grew up with and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it's it's when you you have to chew it and then just spit it out your own way, right? Yeah. Um, and that's where that's where I think you you hopefully that's where I think you rise to the top. At least when I you know when you're looking at art and things and it becomes like arresting, it's just because some suddenly like you know the colors or the compositions or whatever it is, just something about it. Um, and because because there is so much work and there's so much there's so much good work. I mean that's the thing you yeah. know. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's certainly a, a very interesting uh, and I, and again I don't know. That's something like, you know, uh, like I don't know how it was to be a kid. Uh, you know, I'll never know how it is to be a kid with a mobile phone, uh, you know, <laughs> and what kind of nightmare that must be uh, when you're a teenager. But it's like, uh, uh, similarly, I don't know how it is to start your career with the Internet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, yeah. it must be a very interesting. The dynamics are very, very different for sure. You know? Yeah. It's like we come from the times where, I mean, the <laughs> Internet was starting 
Yeah, uh, like literally much. just starting and pretty no much. Facebook, no YouTube, mm -hmm. no Nomans or anything like that. I mean, Nomans were just starting when I was starting in the industry. That's where some of the DVDs were coming out. It was so difficult to get them because yeah. you would have to order them from America. Uh, in order to pay for them, you would have to have a credit card. Getting a credit card in Europe was not an easy yeah. task. You would have That's to true, have like man. a good history. You could have money saved and you would still not be able to pay uh, for the stuff you want to buy because you wouldn't yeah. have a credit card or a PayPal yeah. account. Like buying yeah. from the PayPal changed a lot of things, but er early on, PayPal was fucking pain in the ass to work mm -hmm. with. Like getting anything, <laughs> first of all, trying to find a vendor that accepts it, you know, to begin mm -hmm. with, and then getting the payments. And like it took a week or two to get the money from the bank to, you know, PayPal. It's just like, ah, now it's just like snap, click, everything is, you know, done in a minute yeah yeah, yeah. Well, for sure for sure absolutely and it, it's but it but it is it is still interesting i mean i i think probably back uh in 2000 i mean you know early 2000s right um mm -hmm. there was still like i mean the the first the first few breaks that i got were because some of my work and animation was on the internet and yeah. uh and it was very different for sure i mean you know the, the modems were very slow and so but you would make work that would fit these restrictions and it would still get through and people had firewalls like crazy firewalls for emails and stuff you couldn't <laughs> send it i mean this was crazy you know 128 you know what it was but it was it was just really really extremely limiting to what we have now but again i'm saying everyone everyone every generation works with their own kind of uh, uh, limitation yeah. and tools and and possibilities uh but nevertheless it's still kind of like this 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 tool that allows you to just showcase work which is not produced and advertised you know by you know money you know yeah uh and and that's the big thing that's the thing that you know is is incredible it's just this this idea that you're kind of like you're able to to create that brand yourself uh with the tool that you have and 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 don't you don't need the support of a studio or a financier or you know whatever to do something yeah. like that that looks cool. And it was true before, you know, it's just uh, expectations also to what you would see, what you would open in your email and, and be exposed to was very different. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 that's true. Um, and it's much easier to produce today than it used to be before. Like mm -hmm. today, you if you decide that you want to make something on your own, you could pos possibly make a living out of it, you know, just, mm -hmm. just by the For sheer sure. fact. Um, if you're excited about something, you will find people excited about it too. Yeah, you will find like-minded people like like yourself that will uh, yeah, be excited yeah. enough to actually pursue it if it's a good quality. Oh, absolutely, stuff. absolutely, and you find you find your your niche and and you can kind of thrive in that. Yeah, you know it, this is going to age me as well, but it's like uh, I remember you know with Flash the big thing with because <laughs> I, Flash I, dude, Flash. yeah, <laughs> and 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 Splash, which was the very first version of Flash. Which oh, okay. Is, yeah, dude, yeah. you're yeah. like dinosaur old. Yeah, but but the, <laughs> <laughs> but the um. Uh, the uh, uh, I remember that the nightmare was that uh, the the fra the, the the speed of the the playback would depend on how good your computer was, and therefore yeah, to align true. to align the images with sound was fucking terrible, man. <laughs> I mean, it was just like you know you would have to kind of like cue it and kind of break it yeah. apart for it to play on certain keys. You could never have like a an actual. Um, you know, you could you have to kind of take all the stems and stuff. You couldn't have just one track, uh, and all all of those things are are when you think back, they're just they're pretty crazy. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. The mo the modem times where you would want to open an image over the internet, it would just load like you know the yeah. JPEG image would just like slowly load. Yeah. You'd see yeah. like you know every and couple of pixels. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Totally, man, and now, now it's crazy. Now you have like you know Neil Neil uh, uh, Blomkamp is doing all these kind of old studio stuff where it, it's like you know this. Hi, I mean, did you? Are you? You've seen all this stuff? Uh, not yet, but I've heard about it. But it, it, it's it's cool. It's kind of like you know this this rethinking deliverables and rethinking kind of approach to distribution and filmmaking and mm -hmm. making bits and just having fun with the footage and just putting up there and whatever you don't even think about that anymore do you know what i mean it's yeah. it's this huge kind of like evolution arc um which is so freeing though it's 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 awesome i mean it's it's in terms of distribution in terms of exposure uh, again i think it's just about it's about uh, how do you how do you kind of you know stand out of the noise you know how do you mm. how do you make your voice kind of like you know not louder but 
more intriguing than other people. Right, you know? right, right. There are people that are gonna definitely make want to make the try to make their voices louder and think that's that's gonna work. And sometimes it works, you know. Don't sometimes it does, man. Yeah. There's this. Oh my Which god! All... It actually works a lot of times. <laughs> apparently, there's this guy. I I've sent this link to. I'm gonna send this to you maybe after the stream. But I right. there's this guy on YouTube that sort of like started become like really big, getting like a million million new subscribers a month like something wow. insane and uh he made like a song like he's rapping with his crew like a white right. douche like absolute douchebag looking guy in it and uh -huh. i was like that shit like five years ago six years ago would be like so cr like it's already cringe right but yeah. six years ago it was like the cringiest shit you've ever seen on the internet you know right right and right. now it's just like getting millions of views like some insane amount of views people excited about it like what the fuck is going on in this world you know so sometimes yeah. being loud helps you know <laughs> sometimes it does yeah. and I, I, it's it's you know what it's a different kind of talent yeah it's like uh it's like all these uh my kid is uh my kid is really into musically and so this like creating and my uh you know lip syncing over music and they're like short little 30 sec 20 seconds 30 mm -hmm. second clips of you like filming yourself it's like a, a film selfie i mean you can do other things but a lot of people that's what they do they'll they'll just kind I don't of like understand the kids these I, days <laughs> dude man it's like what is this and it's everyone using that shit and it's it's the, it's the new thing and you know influencers and this and that and it's it's uh yeah it's certainly a very different it's a very different landscape but think about also it's it's replaced live tv you know live yeah. tv doesn't exist anymore so i don't think you know, anyone from from people I know, I don't think any any of them watch TV anymore. Oh, like, I, I, know, I don't have TV. I, I do have the TV set or like the LCD sure. in my in my room, sure, but sure. it's like hooked to internet. <laughs> it's just like yeah, you can watch yeah. YouTube on it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. But think about it, right? It's like YouTube has become the thing that now people watch. I mean, think yeah. about when YouTube started, and it was absolutely unwatchable. It was just nope. unwatchable. Who thought that thing was actually going to become a replace live TV at some point? You know, it, was, so it, it wasn't 1080p. <laughs> it was 10p. <laughs> yeah, and and you know those those these moments that we've kind of experienced where you know you don't you don't um, judge a TV a TV episode anymore. You judge like a TV season. You know, it's right. like all of our Binge all of our change all that stuff. perspective. Yeah, you 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 rarely speak about a singular episode unless it's like you know the Red Wedding from Game of Thrones, whatever it is, right? You have those specific moments in 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 shows. But overall, you kind of like people will very quickly talk about a season, you know, and, and what they like about it rather than a s singular episode, which completely changes your, your dialogue and your idea of production, of yeah. time, all of that stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's really interesting, though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely changing. I'm, I'm, I, and, you know, in a way, you can see that, that change affecting art as well. Uh, Absolutely. Not maybe, not maybe the big productions, you know, the big production would still sort of go with that very sort of traditional way of work where you have mm -hmm. your concepts you go through the review process and whatnot yeah. <clears throat> but there are productions that don't need that anymore and you know especially when you look at the world of podcasts or you know live shows yeah. any of those sort of like more genuine down to earth you know even even working for that kind of show where you just create graphics for the interfaces or you know backgrounds or whatever whatever the hell that is you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's the, the the creation process of itself it's it's completely different and it's changing yeah and shaping the industry or if you just become a personality yourself you know there's this guy i don't know if you've seen his work uh ross tran he has um he has his mm -hmm. own uh youtube channel it's called ross draws oh um, i think yeah yeah he, he makes any it's it, it themes them on known characters, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the he, time, yeah, yeah. Oftentimes, like he's, I think he started with like taking pictures of his, of the food that he's eating, and then changing right. them to like those anime characters, and now he's right. just literally taking pictures of himself and changing them to those characters. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, wow. yeah. It's super entertaining wow. guy, and you know, hey, like he's he's doing really well. You know, um, it's that yeah. that channel it, becomes a, like possibly his livelihood at this point. So. Yeah, yeah. I, and you know, the, the the thing though is kind of like there's a whole layer of like super creative people yeah. that you know that you know. And again, I'm talking about my ten year old kid who's who's you know at some point she was very into those um, you know drawing you know learning how to draw videos and stuff. And so she wanted to make her own and things like that. She loves drawing. Um, and uh, 
I've always loved uh, watching people draw. I would mm -hmm. always ask people, when I was a kid, I would always ask people to, I had quite a few people around me. My dad draws very well. My cousin draws very well. So I'd just be like, you know, always asking them to draw stuff for me. Uh, I think it's a fascinating thing to see people draw, right. you know, m m get things appear out of a white page. You know, there's something really, really, at least, you know, for me, it's always been super satisfying and, and there's something magical about it. Uh, I still feel like that. I mean, some of those kind of like speed thing and, and you know, people draw, draw shit. Uh, not that I watched any of them, but I, can't, I can understand the, uh, the appeal of it. Do you know what right. I mean? Yeah. Um, and as long as there is something creative, and that, that's the, the parent in me talking, is as, as, as much as there, as, as long as there is something creative, there is a creative intention and there is, there, it triggers an interest uh, or, or even like a, a desire to reproduce and to, to uh, you know, to want to know more about that thing, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. You know, um, yeah. is it my taste? Not really. Uh, do I care for it? Not too much. But it's it's again, it's it's to do with with your it's subjective. So um, there is very interesting thing, and some people manage to figure out ways to to make like 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 courses and like you know how to learn how to make loads of different things you know what i mean yeah i think that that stuff is 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 certainly kind of uh, you know valuable and and again back to the drawing uh and and even what you guys are doing you know this all these courses and the, the techniques and the, and the different medias and stuff i mean without without that possible you know, remote interaction uh none of that stuff would happen right you know yeah yeah that's true and it's you know it's it's making education easier too I, yeah I, I wish i had that when i was learning so that'll yeah. be so much easier. <laughs> yeah. Just grab like a course from Learn yeah. Squared or you know School is more any of those those places and and learn from pro professionals. Mm -hmm. It's you know yeah. in a way in a way it's like I'm I'm thinking you know in in TV world you know Bob Ross was sort sort of like that kind of you know <laughs> he like, he will become that, a YouTube personality today. Is, is that the 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 watercolor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy <laughs> with, with the, you know, sort of like this afro. Yeah, the crazy jumpers. Hairdo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was a pioneer, man. Yeah, yeah. definitely pioneer. was. And it was super enter entertaining to watch because he just yeah. like brought that interest to painting. Like even though yeah. his paintings were not like the greatest in the world, but the process of him, how easily he was creating something and how easy, how easy he made it look for you yeah. to actually replicate and do the same for thing. Sure. For sure. Yeah, it was just like super entertaining more recent um, of more recent uh, examples could be looking at Andrew Kramer work for video copilot you know he kind of mm -hmm. did yeah. that for v VFX where yeah it's like yeah. look you can make your face look like a monster with that super quick tricks in uh, in after effects if you follow my steps you're gonna make mm -hmm. it happen mm -hmm. and uh, and that's that I know a lot of people that started you know VFX careers because of that like actually, um, Andrew Harlick, you know, my good friend and also my business partner over at Learn Squared. That's how he started working in the industry. He was just like, yeah. dude, I was watching Video Copilot and I was just super hooked up and now I'm working in the, in the industry. So, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, and, and going back to the Blancamp kind of like uh, O Studio stuff where, uh, if, uh, you know, I only read one article, so uh, I, th I think I got it right. But it's, I think the idea is that uh, they would actually share assets. So, for example, that it would actually, you know, creatures and, and, and yeah. weapon vehicles and stuff. And then so if you buy the actual uh, movie for three bucks or four bucks or whatever, or get it for free on Steam, you would actually get some of the assets mm -hmm. um, as part of, you know, here, here's, this, here's the stuff we made, you know, uh, and make that stuff available to people, which I think is so cool. It's, it's yeah. a really interesting way uh, to think about, you know, movie or, or, or filmmaking distribution or film distribution, you know, a bit more like you would do with, uh, with games, you know, and, yeah. and mods and mods and things like that. Right. Where people what games do like when you buy a game, totally, you oftentimes totally. gets the, uh, you get the, the yeah. engine to work with and you can create yeah. mods. Yeah. Yeah. And then next time around they'll include your special stage of Counter-Strike into the next, you know, do you know what I mean? And it's, it's yeah. something kind of interesting about potentially kind of like opening these bridges, you know, and go, Hey, you know, you guys are, Learning about starting with learning about uh, an After Effects, you know, um, plugin or ways to do something, and then it just goes all the way up to, you know, to uh, to suddenly like you're able to render those cool assets and make a little short film, and you know, yeah. next, you know, you get a 150 million dollar movie deal, right? <laughs> That's the way it works. Yeah, 
Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, just being smart and, you know, yeah. moving with yeah. times. So it's yeah. it's being smart, being being creative, having personality and, and a little bit of luck or having sure. luck being is ready. Huge, man. Yeah, being ready yeah. uh mentally and um and skill wise uh yeah. to meet the opportunity that the luck the luck itself brings because the luck itself happens all the time. Yeah. But um or the moment that that, that opportunity always shows up, but you, because you might you're not ready, you might miss it and you know, yeah. you're not taking on on the opportunity. Whether Absolutely. it's you know, it could be something as simple as, you know, uh, someone's asking you for a favor or, you know, mm -hmm. suggesting like, hey, maybe you should try doing this. And you might think like, just dismiss it, like, fuck it, like, I don't have time for this. But maybe if you listen to that one, you know, advice, it could possibly change your life and put you on the right track to get that, you know, $150 million <laughs> <laughs> movie deal. <laughs> you don't want, you, you, do, you don't want that deal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah. I, I I think it's also like the uh, uh, yeah, like you're saying, you have to, you certainly have to be ready when when the call comes and or, yeah. or the opportunity comes. But you know, it's also it's also being uh, open minded and yeah. um, and just being you know, all, you know, yes, collaboration is super, you know, but you also have to, it has to be the right thing. You know what I mean? And I think I think you make your own luck for sure. Luck is a huge part of of things aligning in terms of timing. You know, it's kind of like you know, do you have even if, even with the best intention and the best art and the best ideas and stuff, sometimes it's not the right time. And yeah. just you know, things that are great, things that you like, you just nurture them until maybe one day it does and does it happen. Or if it doesn't happen, it's okay as well. I mean, I think it's that's, but you can't you can't just wait for that thing. To, you know, do you know what I mean? It's like you can't be expecting it, no waiting for it, and it's it's you know that stuff's all organic, man. So it's it almost it almost feels like. You know, the the yes, you make your own luck, but the luck happens when when it's the right time. Yeah, this really luck, and yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's a it's a tricky thing, right? Yeah, it is. It is balance of it very tricky, but uh, yeah, and you know, and sometimes it's sometimes it's just not right, and you have to be okay with it. You know, I mean, as I mean, it's happened to me many many times, man. Uh, or projects falling apart, uh, you know, features falling apart, uh, being so close to it um, multiple time and. You know, in hindsight, there's always there was always something somewhere that was you know, and maybe it's you also may make it rational for yourself. But there's also like a part of you go, you know what? Is this was not quite right, and this was not quite right. The timing was yeah. a bit off, and uh, and just you keep going, man. You know. Yeah, I, I started so, to think this way about movies uh, m more recently. You know, af especially after seeing the set of Ghost in the Shell and, and seeing how much work actually get gets yeah. done and you're not even aware how much yeah. how much is happening behind the scenes it yeah. almost made me think that it's like the combination of like those lucky moments and opportunities taken taken or lost you know whether it's yeah. you know starting the project not at the right time where specific group of people that if they would be involved would you know turn the movie into something completely different better or worse you know Totally, and it, it's it's uh, you know the fact that a movie happens at all is is, <laughs> it's, is a uh, it's a miracle, man. I mean, it is a miracle. I mean, yeah. from from the idea from the ideation to you know, and then, and then you have your casting is to align, and you know the shooting days needs to align, and you know availability of actors. It's it's just it keeps on it keeps on going, yeah. and you know, and it is such an exciting and 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 intense process. But all along the way, you have these these unknowns and these these alignments that you know sometimes happens and sometimes they don't but yeah absolutely it's just you know when you realize the scope and the scale of that machine when it actually starts uh it is it is overwhelming for sure you know and so so when when these things happen and wherever you are in the production of these things um and you get a, a taste for it you realize you know how also how unstoppable that machine is uh, yeah. So when it actually gets started, it doesn't really finish until it's it's done. You know, uh, whatever happens. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and we're talking where... about movies that are produced with yes. more more than one person. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, we're talking about financed financed movies. You yeah, know, yeah. For sure. Not not necessarily even peop uh, uh, independently financed movies, which don't have necessary distribution. Like movies that are fully financed and yeah. supported by an entity that just want to see it out. Uh, which is a very which is a very different process actually because you know it it puts constraint on the creatives and you know the producing and and all of it is just it just gets kind of like 
just pulled and stretched and yeah. and uh, you know in every direction. So so again, for one to be finished and to resemble something, it is it's a big achievement, man. You know you can't you can't you know as much as there is you know movies that you don't like or you don't enjoy or you know that you feel are failures and stuff. There's always that. For me, there's always that moment where you go, ah, oh, geez, man, I go all this work, all this, all this <laughs> coming together, yeah. uh, um, you know, at some point probably was better or, or, or they overachieve or they made something amazing and, and it, it just elevates everything else. You know what I mean? So either way, you know? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's kind of like watching, it, it hurts when you, when you, you worked on it and you watch it's like, oh, <laughs> opportunity loss. but then again yeah, yeah it's it's yeah. a miracle that it even happens 80 yes. percent of the movies never happen like you, you start yeah. working on it and it just totally. gets shut down totally. like more than 80 percent from my mm-hmm. experience yeah. and yeah. um and the last 20 percent is just like anyone who's just curious how hard it is to make a movie and you know and make it good do something as simple as professional or s- professionally looking photo shoot you know gather a crew uh, Mm -hmm. get a model uh get equipment like rent equipment rent a space and try to make a photo shoot with a with a theme like not just like some portraits where someone sits and you pick pick and you're done like with like some interesting theme where you have Mm -hmm. to prepare props and all of that stuff and and just just look how it all crumbles if you're not prepared Mm -hmm. you know like (laughs) one one thing that you're gonna miss And all of the work is for nothing. You're not even gonna make a photo shoot at all if you mm-hmm. if you forget like your SD cards, something as simple as that, or tripod yeah. with the dark. If you have a dark environment, you don't have a tripod. Fucking good luck making those photos good, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it's it's also, it's also the the ability to uh, think on your feet, right? So it's like you know you go yeah. out there and and you're you're set yourself to achieve one thing. And more often than not, this will not happen that way. Yeah. You know, I think that's something that people don't quite, uh, you know, necessarily understand. You know, people oh, yeah. that are away from the creative process are not used to, you know, on, be on a set or something. It's like, it's just, it stuff just goes left and right. It never goes center, you know? Yeah. I was making that photo uh, shoot as, as part of apprenticeship for, for a photo, photography class with Jingya Zhang, Jing, right. Jingna Zhang. And, the vision of how everything was supposed to go versus how it actually went and what I ended mm-hmm. up, when it, what I ended up with <laughs> was yeah. so off. Different. And the only reason why I completed it is is just because like, fuck, nothing's working. Let's try this stupid idea. Yeah. And like this stupid idea, you know, turned out to be the, fo- the photo shoot saver, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So, so the, the the thing is. So, question for you. I mean, how how often do you feel that even so, even at a very 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 small scale, like just you and a piece of paper and a mm-hmm. pen, you know, when you have something, do you visualize what you want to do in your head before you draw it, or I do try you try to? You try. It depends. Do you, do you, do you achieve that? Ah, uh, rarely. <laughs> All right. But it's it's a small example of like generally it changes. Generally, yeah. it never really. I mean, the translation between your brain and your you know all the way down to your fingers and mechanically and the skills, everything, right? It's just it uh, evolves. You know, yeah, as you're it, working it, on it, 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 it evolves. evolves. Yeah, a photo shoot is a, you know a photo shoot or a movie. It's the same thing. It's just it's it just keeps on scale, changing. Yeah. So you you have to be so open minded about yeah. uh, how great those uh, alternative ideas you have are going to be. You know, and uh, animation is is interesting in a way that um, you do have to cut, you have to pre-conceptualize, you have to cut your edit, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm talking about normal scale animation project, not, you know, Pixar style thing where they'll render a scene fully and then just cut it out and, you know, and do a, a bit, almost the same as uh, what you do have with a live action shoot where you have your, you have your coverage and then you have your handles for each shot yep. and, then, you know, we'll, we'll just, we'll just edit it in, in the editing room, right? So you go and shoot coverage and then you go and make your movie. Whereas, you know, animation, you do everything before you actually start pressing render or whatever yeah, you know yeah. and so there is a even, even choosing the length of a shot without re, without really having any elaborate uh a representation of the motion within 
you have to kind of get a sense of what you want in that shot and what you think the length of that shot is going to achieve in the cut before you really have an elaborate animatic or mocap or whatever, however you do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that is, is, it's, it's so utterly different. It's, you know, it's a narrative, um, uh, you use a sim- you use the language of of, of uh, cameras and light and and all of it. You know the performances. It's got the same finish in a way, but the the, the process is completely reversed, which is really yeah. interesting. And, and in in that sense, it's like everything needs to be established and decided before you even start. Uh, which is uh, which is which is as much you have all this control and and it's overwhelming in that way. Is that you know everything you put on screen, everything you create, everything you you'll decide on that frame will be actually created. Nothing's there, you know. Yeah. Your 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 light, your reflection, your your bokeh, whatever it is that your lens will give you in in uh, in uh, in live action. Well, it has, it has to be thought after it has to be created and intentionally put there in animation, yeah. which is uh, which which is which is interesting though, and see how different. You know the creators and the, the the you know the end results are you know when you look when you look around you know. Yeah, I'll tell you yeah. something funny. When I was making that photo shoot, we the idea was that we we are going to use hot lights so that we can right. have the continuous light so we can have the because it was for um, it was like a remake of of um, of Blade Runner, one of the Blade Runner scenes with uh, right. with Roy Batty dying on the on the rooftop, you know, with mm-hmm. the rain and with the rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. boy. Oh so boy. the idea was that we're gonna use like um, some kind of sprinkle system or something so that the water is sort of looking like rain and it's falling on the on the on the model, and then hot lights will capture the motion blur and we'll just control it based on you know the shutter speed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We ended up using strobe lights because <laughs> it was safer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To begin with, uh, uh-huh. we ended up using strobes. <laughs> there were some things that I didn't account for, which is like when you, you use strobes, you have to flash in like uh-huh. you know, one, one. Uh, I don't know, one of one of a thousandth of a second to capture the. Because we didn't use uh, we didn't use tripod in the end, so strobe lights allowed me to sort of like move around with the camera properly to get the right framing. Right. You know, do enough shots to get the right framing. But then all of the water drops, they ended up being like c- circles. And because of the <laughs> lens, they had like bouquet <laughs> effects and like some fringing. It was like nightmare to clean. You yeah. Know? yeah. So it was like a lot of those things just so so happened during the shoot. Like we were, we were I was like, fuck, you know? <laughs> How am I going to deal with that? But, you know, again, coming back, like, yeah, in animation, I think everything is more controlled in a way, as you said, like you have to plan for everything. And, it, yeah. you know, it depends on the on the illustration project you're working on because in illustration sure. it might be the same story. You know, you're going to start sure. with, the, with the concept and you're going to, you know, move on to, like you're going to start with a sketch or thumbnails. You're going to move on to, you know, refining the concept and then making iterations, whatever, whatever you're being asked to do. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're, you know, into t- going into like computer games realm where you're gonna create concepts, someone's gonna use them to make, you know, 3D models, animate, and blah blah blah. Like, yeah. There's a, there is a process, but yeah, there's mm-hmm. certain things For that sure. you just cannot control and they change yeah. over time. Yeah, they definitely do. Yeah, dude, yeah. we've been talking for an hour and a half. Time is we have. flying as fast as <laughs> fuck, dude. <laughs> it's good though. Um, it's fun. How, what do you think about jumping into some questions uh, and sure. then wrapping it up? I don't want to hold sure. you for too long. And sure, um, sure. yeah. All right. So let's, uh, there's, there's a few questions here. I'm going to jump into a few and we can wrap it up, wrap it up there. It's been a, it's been a pretty productive conversation, man. It's pretty, pretty good one. I've learned, yeah. I've learned a thing or two. <laughs> so. Are we reaffirmed, reaffirmed things, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the very first one was like uh, the 2D and 3D is so well implemented together. How did you process it? And I, I think it relates to mostly to your, I, I, I guess almost all of your animations. Because I've been, as we were talking, I was playing your Vimeo feed pretty much. Oh, okay. <laughs> so right. All of in your, a loop? Yeah, in a loop. <laughs> all of your cinematics. So I'm sorry. I'm I told sorry, you many guys. times. I told you many times <laughs> that uh, uh, the project cinematic is my favorite because of like the artistic style you, you went for. 
I gotta actually bug you maybe later on how you did that smoke or you know how did you get to work with artists I don't know if you did it or you know any of the editors you work with did that but that smoke when they break the gate you know in projects yeah it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's frame by frame it's kind of like it's uh it's are you, you know, those, serious the, yeah you know those guys it's those Fuck. guys are cr those guys are crazy <laughs> okay they literally Makes took sense. they literally took the shots uh and then just uh painted on top yeah yeah that's wow. my crazy focus. yeah wow. it's, it's, it's I'm insane impressed. and I'm that impressed. shot that shot that that, that top shot that's kind of like you know following those guys on the it's a long shot as well to animate that stupid smoke and stuff is yeah that's what that, i was yeah. like dude that smoke is so fucking juicy man it's, it's like it's, oh <laughs> I know. I, to, to the animation is so sweet, man. And it, there's something, you know, I remember, um, I remember, you know, like that big blast at the end. Yeah. The huge explosion. Uh, and, uh, is that frame by frame too? It is. Okay. Yeah, it's all frame by frame. And then, the uh, fuck? you're blowing my mind now. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, this is just crazy, crazy talented guys. And, that is uh, so insane. We're actually yeah, watching it, it right now as we were talking about it. So. And it, and it's so, it's, it's just like, you know, they just sketch that shit just like that, you know, and then you have like all the, the, the you know, the, the, the effects artists, the CG effects artists are just, you know, trying to kind of match or trying to emulate some shit and stuff and trying to create this, this super dynamic kind of like this, this synergy of like, you know, uh, this tension. And then those guys, they go like, fit, 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 fit. and then just like this huge explosion wow. and complicated shit. And then just everyone is like, what the they fuck? They have some epic then animators I, then. Yeah. And, and, um, and then the, uh, uh, at some point, the, one of the guy was like, hey, uh, do you think it'd be cool to, uh, you know, he kind of goes to white. And he was mm -hmm. like, oh, do you think it'd be cool to, uh, to, see, to still see some silhouettes of, of, uh, of some of the of two of the characters still fighting and stuff? And I was like, I, I I don't think so. It's like, well, I I've, I've sketched something. Just check it out. And he just made this like, in the way those two silhouettes come. Kind of, and it was super sketchy, but it was so freaking awesome. And it was just, and everybody was like, you know, animators, you know, the, all this, the the CG animators and stuff, just like fucking, I'm I, I'm done with this, man. Just everybody because there's such <laughs> a there's such a you know, it's so tactile. It's so it's so kind of. Uh, uh, yeah, I, it, I guess tactile. It's just there's such a the, the curve, the lines, the yeah. you know, the pacing is so organic. Uh, there's something so satisfying about it, and that's and in going back to the two D three D thing, it's like that's why I've always uh, attempted to do uh, when I work in in CG is like is to try to uh, break away from the super clean, to break away from you know. Uh, you know the uh, uh, things which are which are you know as, not as rich as mm -hmm. you would want them to be when you start conceptualizing things. You know, and it's that goes from from silhouettes to textures to bump to map, bump maps and stuff like that, and and just and just trying things. I mean, you know, uh, it's it's very much about every project is kind of attempting to pull push another button here and there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, and and not not going for tune, but just you know working working. No, not going for ways to do that, you know, within the the software, but, but rather find ways to implement some of those looks or recreating some of those looks by fucking around a bit with uh, with the tech, you know. Right. Uh, and those guys at Axis are, are are freaking great at doing that stuff. Just yeah, really you blew my mind, up. man. Uh, have you ever? Have I'm pretty sure you've seen Acura, right, or Ghost in the Shell? Acura, especially, or yeah. any of the Ghibli studio that's smoke that smoke man you know akira, akira that smoke is yeah. so nice <laughs> and you know it's it's that thing of kind of like oh how do you how do you create that in cg you know i mean and and there are examples there are some great examples that people that do it quite well i mean there are some uh, uh i was actually seeing the footage from a dragon ball z fighting game that's going to come out mm -hmm. that was they're showing some gameplay at uh, e3 um yesterday or something or two days oh, ago I didn't know. uh and it's all it's all cg and it just looks freaking awesome and it's got all that kind of like super dynamic very kind of like modular very kind of organic shapes and stuff see that, um, that's how i get in my news i talk to people and now i gotta check go. it out there you go there you go <laughs> as, 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 yeah sure I'll, I'll feed you news on, on e3 uh but it, but it's it's you know so there are there are um you know particularly from i think partly from from japan that they kind of like they're working on that stuff there there's such part of their aesthetic and their language you know this kind of very, very volute, very thick kind of like rolling smoke. Right. 
um, and you know you try you you know it's shaded in such a, a such a way it's kind of colored you know the the, the duotone that they where they apply the shade the, the you know the shadows on it it's a nightmare to make that in as a volume do you know what I mean so yeah. um, I'm sure there are people doing it super well and and uh, I don't oh, yeah, have the right sure. examples sure. but but for for that for that particular project we were yeah I mean defaulting to 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 the to the animation frame by frame the the thing though is kind of like I really wanted to have all the effects all the uh, the the sparks from the the swords eating um, you know the guys landing the things mm-hmm. breaking all that stuff I wanted it to be uh, uh, 2D for sure I mean I'm right. a huge fan of Japanese animation and stuff so from way back so it's like I, I love the feel of that stuff. Um, and in some ways, if animation was not as, uh, 2D animation was not as time consuming. And so uh, if you pick a particular style so hard to reproduce and, and keep that. Especially aesthetic, frame by frame. It's super hard. It's a motherfucker but if, to work with. Yeah. But if it was, if it was more streamlined and there was, you know, I, I would just, I would do more of my, most of my work, I would do it 2D, man. Because there's yeah. so much, there's so much freedom in like bending limbs and just kind of like just accentuating, you know, camera angles with deformation and stuff, but not in the actual lens, but in actual kind of like pose, you know, poses right. of the character, which, you know, in, in CGS, it's, it's, you can, you can do it, but it, it's, uh, it's, a uh, yeah, it becomes, feels different. It becomes, yeah, it totally feels different. Have you yeah. seen Blame on Netflix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what exactly you what you're talking about. It does feel. Th- it yeah. feels like a little bit heavy and sort of yeah. like sloppy, slobby ish. Yeah. Like it has that energy, but it feels like slow motion almost. Yeah, it's kind of lost. It's um, it's 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 not it's not as, it's lost its soul a little bit. I find. Yeah, but it, it looks awesome. Like, it still looks awesome. I it, love it. It looks looks beautiful. Yeah, I, I to- totally agree with you. But there is uh, there are beautiful stills like in motion that just not as dynamic. That they, they don't flow as well. You know, yeah. as, as yeah, your yeah. your regular kind of two D anime um, for sure. Yeah, some of the I think some of the explosion stuff and some of the particle stuff they did in two D. It kind of looks that way at least. You know, right. Um, right. But, but characters again, I, are all three D for sure. Yeah, but but again, I think there 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 are certainly ways to uh to do cg smoke that look awesome and yeah and you know uh, very kind of like manga or anime like but i think for this particular production i think you know there's so much time to r&d there's so much time to you know do this and you have to pick your your battles yeah, and, yeah of course and uh you know that and was you ha- something and you have a budget too so and you have a budget <laughs> you have a delivery and and you have a team as well like for example yeah. like you know the the shot uh before uh, you know the character is kind of like you know jumping forward and it's just this it's gathering all this energy around and it's just kind of you know all the power is kind of like uh, uh, you know uh, growing around him and he just starts glowing and shit uh, I mean that stuff was CG um, and you know it was like hey we spent time you know and it's super nicely done I mean the guys doing us super talented and I was like you know, he can. It's better if he spends time doing that shit, that shit well, and then we just do the big, you know, bada boom at the end. Uh, <laughs> you know, with uh, with something that's more free form. You know, yeah, because yeah. it's also about iteration. It's also about, you know, about kind of figuring out the right design. And and it's also when you start mixing techniques, it's about how well they come together. Because yeah. that's the pro- that's the problem. It's kind of like very quickly, it just it looks like it's pasted on top, which uh, that can suck. Yeah, you, you don't want uh, uh, animation to look like bashing of some weird elements that just no. don't stick together do you unless, remember unless, unless this is the aesthetic that you're going for <laughs> <laughs> unless you're going like south park south, yes. south park style yeah. not give a fuck just or, go for or, a, or a, a, gum, gum, a gumball gumball is doing it quite well do you know yeah gumball? yeah yeah, yeah. gumball is yeah. i yeah, i've, it's pretty I've awesome. learned about this because my daughter just accidentally you uh-huh. know yeah, it's pretty cool uh put it on tv and i was like what the what is this <laughs> yeah. it's, it's kind of funny cool. Do you remember what uh, someone was asking? Do you remember what rendering engine you you, you used for that uh, particular you know what? one? No, I'm probably not the right guy to ask all this stuff. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna because I'm gonna say the wrong things and I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure. You know, it's not not, not really. I mean, I don't. Uh, you know, that part of the uh, of it's no it's not my. Uh, I as long as it looks the way it should, a eh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Someone asked, when you started out, what did you find? What did you find most challenging from an artistic standpoint, and what do you uh, find challenging today? Uh, you mean in general, or yeah, I would say in general. 
Right. Um, I don't know. I think it's kind of like finding what's always, I guess it, what's always the most challenging or the most, uh, is finding the right people to, uh, to collaborate with in terms of like the people that will give you, uh, that trust and are, are, uh, uh, you know, buy your work, you know, mm-hmm. as a, you know, it's, and, and when you start, it's always like that. It's like finding people that see something in your work of value, you know, um, and something that feels personal enough to you that it's, uh, it's, just, it's the start of a, of something personal and, and a career. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, that's the trickiest start. That's the trickiest thing at the start, you know, and, and not feel like you're, emulating something else that is working at the moment so you'll figure out you know you'll 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 get a work placement rather than having something special to sell or to offer and then people recognizing that do you know what i mean uh because i think that's i think that's where you start um it's a validation you know what i mean it's something that just kind of suddenly allows you to you know, to, uh, to say, Hey, I'm doing that. What I'm doing is right. Or mm-hmm. my, my, uh, intentions are right. Or, you know, my uh, impressions of, you know, my sensibility is aligning somehow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the toughest thing at the start, you know, and, and some people get a break very quickly. Some people takes a while to get that break. Uh, you know, where you, where you do need to, I think, you know, but he, but he does come, I think, you know, you, you do find your place uh, and your place doesn't have to be, hey, I'm the guy who does that and I'm, I'm making a career at being known for that. It doesn't have mm-hmm. to be like that. Do you know what I mean? But I think I think everyone probably starts with that in, intention and then find, it, find his way or her way, uh, you know, through productions. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I think the uh, now um, I think it's the. Once you have that recognition, is is to stay relevant, uh, mainly you know mainly so you can carry on you can carry on being commissioned work, mm-hmm. but you can also carry on working and create and do the things that you love, you know. Yeah. Um, and staying relevant is is not having to reinvent yourself all the time, but to make sure that you are um, refreshing your you know your creative uh, uh, mind, you know, uh, yeah. as much as you as much as you need to. And, and that's that's always a challenge, I think, you know, um, it is. for it sure. Is. Yeah, it's it's just finding out, you know, uh, your flow and yeah. definitely st- staying relevant and making sure that you can pay the bills in order to pursue what you really love. Cause Indeed. If you work and you don't like doing what you're doing, then it just becomes yeah, a nightmare. Not, yeah. yeah, it's not, not worth doing. And, you know, and I think it's uh, also there's a there's a reality that once you once you find that voice or once you find the thing you like and if you if your work gets start, it starts to get critiqued on the Internet and by clients and by audiences and things, then then there is there is this, um, you know, it, it you open yourself you know, yeah. to that, to, to, that di- to that dialogue. Oh, you totally, you totally need to, but opening yourself to that dialogue, you become a part of that big conversation. And I think yeah. that, that can, that can be, it can be tough though, you know, uh, because, because more often than not, when you create stuff, it's, it's, it's your, it's, it's personal, you know, even though, yeah. even though like the client fucked around with this and you, you know, you can make excuses and this and this and I, if you feel like it's not quite fulfilled, you're, vision for it but at the end of the day nobody cares i mean people see what it is w- yeah. w- what it, it, people see it for what it is uh and i think it should be like that so you know at that point it's about uh, learning how to kind of like also distance yourself from that thing and and just um uh, and just uh, try to see stages in a pro in a in a in a bigger process rather than just kind of hang on to a singular singular things you know yeah yeah you have to have a fixed skin like you know yeah Sure. If you love your, what you're doing, you're not gonna pay attention to you know pointless critics. Um, sure. There's there's something that I've heard on Tim Ferriss podcast. I don't remember who he was talking to, but that person said uh, there are no statues uh, erected for critics. You know, and that's mm-hmm. that's absolutely true. If you go to you know national monuments, do you see anyone who's <laughs> just a film critic? Yeah. No, you you see like presidents and artists and and and, and people that actually spend a lot of time creating something that is meaning meaningful you know mm-hmm. yeah. uh criti- th- cr- saying words and critiquing is the easiest thing to do because you, you you don't have to be in the in the skin of a person who's doing your actual work you know yeah yeah i, I always look at it that way so 
And sure. if you want to do something that you have full control over, just do your personal work, you know, and, um, yeah. No, I, absolutely, absolutely. And then, and then again, it's kind of like whoever you decide to uh, share it with or have a conversation about it, uh, yeah. it has it has to be educated and constructive. I think it's kind of like I mean, the problem is is you know where you're coming from with the work, and generally, yeah, you you're putting things. Um, the way you put things out and why you're putting it out there. Uh, and, you know, I, I, f I feel that uh, a lot of people are kind of like, they will put it out there t f and expect a certain kind of reaction where I think it's yeah, it's kind of like the, the wrong way around. It's, it's the wrong way around. And, and I, do uh, it, I do it myself too sometimes. I, I find I, myself like totally, checking totally. back, mm, did I get enough yeah. likes? <laughs> yeah, to totally. And then I and realize, why do I give a fuck about likes? <laughs> No, I, I, absolutely, and I, and I think it's kind of like inherent to to the way things are done now, and and how you're. It's also part of you having access to a huge amount of uh, of critics. It's also yeah, your yeah, brain yeah. dopamine, you know, and yeah, how I mean, dopamine is created sure. when you when you get those, you know, updates. Oh, uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, because it's 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 like it's in a way it's a dream to be able to kind of like. You know, you can make a short film, or you can make like a, an, an image, an illustration, and stuff, and then just share it with people. Yeah, uh, it's awesome. You know, but uh, you know, you have to be ready. You have to be ready to uh, to bear the consequences of it <laughs> sometime because you know it, it's it's not not everything is wonderful, and that's okay. You yeah, know? that's uh, true. You, you just gotta be okay with it. You know. Yeah, <laughs> if, if I could give anyone a, like one career advice, you just follow <laughs> follow your passion, and you know, and if you if you if you're passionate about something, you, you you will not have to be convinced to do it. You know, mm -hmm. if 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 it takes if one or two failures, you know, steer you away from that, then it's probably not for you. Yeah. And yeah, I would say sure. don't let anyone tell you that you know you cannot do it because that's that's another another thing that is just you know might be might be bad for you. And finally, just take a risk. If it doesn't work out, then at least you know you're gonna have that satisfaction that at least you tried, you know. And at the end of the day, you will know that that was not that maybe have not been a thing for you, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The worst thing that can happen is just you trying and that, or you're not trying and then regretting it, like ten years later, like oh, I wish I tried this and now it's too late, you know, that kind of stuff. So. For sure, and and there's also that thing. It's kind of like we, you know, anyone that is actually producing things. Uh, for a living or getting work commissioned and and uh, making movies and and being a concept artist there's so many times you fail and there's so oh, yeah. many uh, there's hundreds of pitching even though even in the same time as you're producing uh, a really cool game cinematics or pitching on a movie or whatever it is you're you're still getting like you know loads and loads of like nope 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 next time next time next time and so it's yeah. kind of like it's it's also about that i mean it is not a process that changes uh you might have done some big thing for big movies you're still kind of like and i, I think that's that's hopefully that demonstrates that you're trying to constantly kind of like you know evolve and change and and yeah. reach out for something different because uh you sh you should always find resist you know resisting kind of like people uh the, the thing with with uh the thing with clients is that they don't buy potential they don't buy they don't buy uh, your great ideas that you have in your head they don't they're not interested in investing in your potential yeah. Uh, it's very, very rare. People will want to buy what they see. Uh, uh, mainly, in, I mean, commercials, uh, the movie industry is the same, but it's, it's the studio is the same. It's like they they want to buy a sure value, uh, and therefore, the more you expand yourself as an artist, the more you're able to show, uh, if you can, different styles or or different kind of like skills and abilities and stuff. Then you're more likely to be picked. Yeah. Uh, be, you know, and again, it's just. People don't care if you if you if you think you're great and you should give it a chance. You know, more likely people are not going to give it to you unless you can show, you know, what you can can do. So again, they don't invest in potential. And I, I think that's something that very very early on became very clear. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, they're not they're not they're no charities. You know, sadly yeah. though, because it'd be great. Um, but uh, yeah, mm. it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, how having a child changes your way of working? Um, Can be your creativity or thinking of time. Yeah, or, or sure. I, I don't. I don't. 
Yeah, I don't know if I mean it is it certainly slowed down a little bit. Um, oh yeah, you need to slow down for sure. Yeah, it it certainly slowed down because you want to be with your kid. I mean your wife also, but it's like you want to be with your family. There nah, is fuck that, just is, the kid. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you like, know, like literally is, fuck that and just the kid. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, you said it, my friend. <laughs> but it's uh, um, I think it's 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 certainly that. So there there is there is a desire to be. Uh, uh, less in front of your screen and and you know take part in this wonderful thing that kind of yeah, kids are awesome man. i mean it's like every stage is over the way but but the, the biggest i think the biggest change is is you yourself i think yeah. like my interests uh my ideas for stories um the things that i read that i watch the way i react to them uh super different and I, that that is the biggest impact i think is that you're you're your role in terms of kind of like as a human being kind of changes and and it kind of like it positions you very different from you know very kind of like uh you know narratives that you're used to used to to like for certain reasons or themes and things like that i just really yeah. started kind of like taking that stuff it does in very change you for sure yeah yeah dude and i remember seeing and that's awesome that's great yeah, yeah. i and to that, to your point, I remember seeing um, what was that movie uh, by Christopher Nolan? God damn it, I forget the name. The the space Inception. movie. Uh, in- Interstellar. Interstellar. Yeah, Interstellar. Interstellar. There you go. Yeah. God damn it! How could I forget? Uh, Interstellar. Almost, <laughs> almost everyone who's a parent that watched that movie loved that movie. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people that didn't like that movie have never had kids. But you know, you know, you know what? I think. I mean, it, I think it goes beyond that, though, because I mean, absolutely, like movies which will have themes and yeah. and scenarios and protagonists that are, you know, uh, uh, that have these these uh, tension or struggles or or connection, you know, with with family members, uh, absolutely for sure, and kids and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's but I think there's also like just just a, a very simple uh, themes of of survival or. Um, you know, just kind of like more generic ideas, you know, just generic yeah. ideas of like of, of, of the world, of like uh, relationships, uh, of uh, dis- how much destruction you really have time for and all that kind of shit. It's some of that stuff really kind of suddenly gets leveled. Um, more grounded. And, uh, more, yeah, more grounded. And, and, and you, you shift, you shift your priorities and you, 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 you respond to other other kind of like stories and it's not better or worse it's just kind of like it just it just you become a slightly different uh, yeah. person and your focus is slightly different um you know and you cry a lot more right <laughs> <laughs> I, I said that <laughs> you do you do i know oh, a person do. that was crying during chappy and he doesn't have kids oh, oh boy <laughs> oh boy oh, wow. <laughs> Um, all right, let's get one more and, and wrap it up. I think. All right. Um, all right. That's a good. That's a good one. These days, everyone seems to have a project they wish would be animated. What would you suggest to be a good way for a one man project to see fruition? Wow, it's a challenging question. For a one man project. Uh, so in terms of like, what's the, what, what would be the elements to create, to get that project noticed or seen, you know what I, I mean? Think, is that... No, I think it's just making it happen because like doing anything right. that is animated is just so overwhelming. Right, 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 right. Um, yeah, sure. So technically, and I don't think, I don't right. think that person is asking like, mm, what, what's the best idea for me to oh, yeah. work on something? Oh, no, 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 it's <laughs> not. No, no, no. I... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me see i'm just gonna have my big 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 bag of ideas yeah, this is my uh, book of ideas and <laughs> if i read it if you if you follow every step by take step what, you'll take, have take animation whatever, done take whatever you like yeah <laughs> um i mean you know it's it's i think uh, it ties into to i think it ties into the reality that uh you know the more you can show the more you can uh you know it, it's kind of like the more you can start conceptualizing for people to get excited by uh, the better, because also it's like you know, ideas. Uh, as much as you can communicate them very well with uh, uh, words or or just in a conversation, you know, people people's imagination or or interpretation of it can just goes kind of like crazy places, right? Yeah. And 
maybe not your maybe your ideas it is valuable because it's you because there is that personality you know underneath it and that's yeah. what makes it special so you know people you'll pitch your idea and they'll say ah yeah it's like a, a you know chappy meets uh uh titanic i don't know whatever but you know what i mean and so yeah. it's kind of and you go no, no 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 it's not it's not that it's yeah and and so i think you know the more you can um and again, animation is is heavy to produce. So, but the closest to animation is is conceptualization. It's it's characterization. It's it's just kind of giving it form and shape and color. You know, the more you can. I mean, you can even do that in mood boards. You know, you can do just a lot of research, a lot of you know, from lighting, cinematography to to uh, shape, language to architecture. And I yeah. think you know, people. I think people these days and clients and respond to to. To collection of images, they, they, you know, you can wrap your head around uh, 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 an entire visual for a movie just by collecting images. You know what I mean? There's yeah. that even if you don't know how to draw well, or you feel that your style is not the right one to express what you would like to achieve in the end. Um, may, you know, maybe it, just find find what it is, find the style, find example, uh, make sure that the illustrators are. Are, are their name or somewhere, you know, and go yeah. back to them if you get the movie projects and get them to work on it, uh, you know, if it's inspired by their work. But you know what I mean? It's like find your inspiration, find the, the language and what is what is it that is different uh, in terms of your aesthetic yeah. uh, and the tone of them. I think the tone of, of any project is very important. I think it's something that people very quickly forget to put forward all the time is the tone, the tone, the themes. You know, yeah. What what is it about you know because the envelope the the slick designs the technical skills to make a little short film at the end of the day no one cares if the substance if the if the at the core you know that story feels intriguing and feel personal and feel different uh yeah. you know it, it, it does you know and that's that's what i would always say to start with is you know who who are who are these people? What's what's the story about, and and what's the tone of it? Um, and then just put put lots of of colors on it. You know, in terms yeah. of images and and shapes and stuff. You know, so you don't necessarily. I think you don't necessarily need to to create artwork yourself. Um, you know, depending on like who you're selling it to. You know. Yeah. And if you, I guess, if you wanted to do it yourself, uh, just like scale down scale down your expectation. Like if you think yeah. you can do X, then Try to do only one tenth of it, yeah, and see how yeah. it's, how it's challenging your idea in general. And I, you know that's a good, that's going to be a good starting point. Yeah, and you touch upon something really interesting. I mean, <coughs> South Park would be nothing if not for how funny it is. Like it's it's yeah, literally sure. the the humor the humor of of you know mm -hmm. of the of the creators of South Park yeah. is what actually yeah. makes the show. Yeah, it's the writing. Without man. that humor, it's so it, good. Yeah. Without that humor, without that writing, without the dialogues and the way they're producing it, mm -hmm. there's no show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're gonna sure. you're gonna look at it, it looks like crap. Move on. Yeah, and it's the same. It's the same with you know the Simpsons. It's the same with all these kind of very very particular yeah. shows. But it is it is also to be you know because there's there's a lot of there's a lot of everything out there, right? So very yeah. quickly you will find that oh this looks a little bit like destiny meets whatever or this is you know what i mean it's just like everything just echoes every <laughs> other world and so tell me about it anytime one, i post on instagram it looks like this it looks like yeah, that exactly I know. right so the really the one thing you have that no one else has is potentially you know obviously you can make some super original designs i'm not saying that but if that's not where it's coming from then it's about it's ideation you know yeah. it's it's uh, it's mixing of ideas you know yeah. um, and that that can never never fail you know if if you have the core right uh, you know whatever veneer you put on top will just be bonus you know yeah i agree dude all right let's wrap it up here i think all uh, right. i think we got a good good amount of uh, qu questions answered for oh, anyone right. who's listening sorry for not answering your especially the people that you know came over and asked those questions in the chat sorry that we couldn't answer them all but you know maybe another time yeah, i would like i would too. love to have you you know on the show sometime sometime sure soon again. it was, it yeah, was absolutely. awesome awesome yeah, uh, conversation thanks, man. thanks for uh, inviting me man pleasure yeah it was it was fun. It was fun to talk with you. We should we should grab a coffee soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Still, absolutely. still, still close enough to do it. I'll come, so. I'll come and visit your side of the west side. Right? All right, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Take All care. Right.